Hi everyone, Vicki Verley here, the Rock and Roll Prophetess. Today we're going to do your June of 2024 Psychic Tarot reading with Animal Totem, and we're going to pull some lots of loves, lots of answers, lots of proverbs. We're even going to pull a card from my brand new upcoming deck of the All Seeing Eye Oracle. A uh, little bit about me, I've been a reader for many decades now. I've got my first deck all the way back in the 1970s started reading professionally in the 1980s and I've done thousands and thousands of actual client readings so this is my readings are based on not only a psychic um, communication that I've developed in language with my guides but all of my years of ex actual experience in the field of doing actual readings for people before we well the decks we're going to use is the rock and roll tarot deck the Hanson Roberts and we're going to pull a card from the Beast Mistress Animal Oracle cards we're going to pull a card from the All Seeing Eye Oracle my upcoming deck and we're going to pull lots from the lots of answers, lots of love, and lots of proverbs, all of my own creation. Before we dive into the readings for the sign by sign, I want to run over a few things. I want to wish all the Geminis and Cancer sun sign people happy birthdays. This is your solar return. Super powerful time to manifest your reality, set your intentions. Some of the astrology for this month, on the 6th, we're going to have a new moon in Gemini at 16 degrees, 18 minutes of Gemini. And then on the 20th, we're having the solstice. This is a big turning point for everyone. When the sun moves into a cardinal sign, that is when we change the seasons or we turn a corner. So the cardinal signs include Cancer, Capricorn, Libra, and Aries. So when the sun moves into one of these four cardinal signs, no matter where you're at, northern hemisphere, southern hemisphere, it signifies a change of season and there absolutely is a shift in energy and everyone is affected. Right the very next day practically, well it's going to be, it may vary, this is from Eastern Time US so it may vary a little bit, but the very next day, 21st, full moon in Capricorn at one degree of uh, Capricorn. So pose that solstice point, that'll be interesting to look at. Um, I'm going to be talking about my All Seeing Eye cards, which are on Kickstarter. You can go to the end of the video where we're going to do a deep dive. We'll talk about the contest because there's a giveaway associated where I'm giving away some readings. You can go to the end of, of the video and find out all about that and a deep dive into this deck. And also I want to remind everybody that I do have these solstice readings available. This is a limited time reading. It starts out, it's more astrology based, but it's a psychic astrology reading. And um, it's always a popular reading every year. It's sort of like a mid-year check-in, you could even say. But it's based in astrology, but still yet a very much a psychic reading. All right, with that being said, let's go ahead and move on to our sign by sign. And we're going to start out with the sign of Aries. Let me move these cards out of the way. And put this up here so you can see. And I can see, too, who we're reading. Sometimes I even get a little confused when we're doing a lot of readings like this. Let's go ahead and start shuffling up for the Aries. This is for Aries Sun, Rising, Moon, or anybody who has prominent Aries in their astrological chart. We're going to pull three cards for June for our Aries friends. The first cards we've got is the uh, Knight of Pentacles. Earth sign energy could be that new, that full moon. Ace of Pentacles, some money coming in. And then finally, the Hangman. Okay. Now we're going to do three cards from the Hanson Roberts deck. For Aries Sun, Rising, and Moon for the month of June 2024. Let's see what we get here. We've got one, two, three. We've got the Queen of Swords, Air Sign Person. We've got the Tower card. Wow, okay, big changes. And finally, the Ten of Cups. Well, this is so interesting. Here, let me straighten this out a little bit there. That's better. This is so interesting to me, this bottom row, is because we have the Tower, but then followed by the Ten of Cups. So that's, you know, the tower is a big shakeup, and people see the tower and we get all scared and, oh God, what's going to happen and everything else. And it can, it is a big shakeup and a big turnabout in our lives. But when it's followed by the Ten of Cups, that could be very positive. And the tower is not always a bad thing. It's a major clearing. So there's something about a major clearing that's going to clear the way for this Ten of Cups energy, which is wonderful, beautiful energy. Ten of Cups is the marriage card, and it can signify that, but it really talks about just being at that ten, that ultimate happiness. Each suit in the tarot has a, an ace, and then it culminates in a ten. So the ace is the beginning of the energy, and the ten is the most, or the fulfillment. So this is the Ten of Cups. 
This is the most love, happiness, joy. So we always love when we see that Ten of Cups here. You've got a Queen of Swords. Now there's no gender in these readings because there's so many people we're reading for. So this is an air sign person. Or it could be talking about while we're in the time of air before the solstice. Because the solstice is when we move into Cancer. So before the 20th could be a person coming in and they are looking past this chaos toward this Ten of Cups. So it's almost like they can see the way through or they're going to be there with you or something. They're going to ride this thing with you. There is that full moon energy here also with that full moon shining in the background here. So the solstice, as we said in the, in the intro, it's just it's right there at the solstice time in that full moon. So it could be that full moon in Capricorn. Whatever the case, this is some very positive energy leading to the Ten of Cups. On the top row, it looks like some uh, financial gains. Now, we've got a Earth sign person, Taurus, Capricorn, Virgo. Well, we're not going to be in Earth sign. We're going to be in air and, and water this month. But, again, we're going to have that Capricorn moon, which is a, a Earth sign energy on the 21st. There could be this whole thing, too. could be some kind of new beginning in money for somebody, a new job. And it could be something that you've been waiting on for quite some time. You've been waiting a long time. I, that 12 is standing out to me. So it could be that you've been waiting on it for 12 weeks, 12 months, 12 years per perhaps. But really what comes to mind, because Capricorn energy starts at the end of December, the 12th month. And I'm wondering if it's not something that maybe you initiated all the way back in December or early January when, the, when we had the Capricorn new moon of last year or beginning of this year. And then now at the full moon time where it's finally come to fruition. But overall, I mean, the tower's in the spread, but there's nothing to indicate anywhere else that that's going to be a bad thing. It certainly seems like, especially if you've been in some stagnant energy, that tower energy can be fantastic for moving you forward and getting the blessings and the wonderful things that you're after. Okay, let's get our animal totem for our Aries from my Beast Mistress Animal Oracle cards. You've got the dragonfly. That is such a beautiful card of transformation and healing. Uh, let me, I have to get my different glasses on. I forgot, I'm just going to have to do some reading here. Actual reading of letters, not just psychic reading. <laughs> okay. Inhabiting two worlds at once, air and water. So we got the air, well, air and water, the solstice, we're on the cusp of that air and water, right? Day and night. Multidimensional travelers bringing healing and light. Protectors of the realm, lifting the veil of consciousness. Yeah, this is a, the dragonfly is absolutely a very much a transformative card as well. So I do feel like major transformation. But again, I'll say it doesn't seem like it's a bad thing at all. I'm just going to move a few things around here so I can get my all-seeing eye oracle. This is the, my new deck and I have a whole uh, deep dive about it at the end of this video if you want to learn more about it but we are going to pull it's a, not only a divination deck but it's also a scrying board with a pendulum and it's in kickstarter as i'm recording this video and i'm trying to raise the funds to get it printed with all the little extras that i really want to it have their little pendulum and other things but again you can go to the end of the video to find out more let's pull one card for aries You've got the communications card or the messaging card. You know, this has a lot to do with Mercury, but this also has could have a lot to do with the sign of Gemini, which is the ruler of Mer Mercury rules over. But that's like uh, sending these messages. This could also indicate that. Sending these messages, you know, um, check those spam things. Check your spam meal because there could be something in the spam that you overlooked. Um, maybe for some it could be this money is coming in through the form of some sort of a telecommunications field or having to do that might be the field but check those phone messages check those texts make sure this happened to me I, I accidentally muted somebody on text that I didn't mean to and I look back and here they've been texting me all night I, I must have just accidentally hit the button like during the mercury retrograde so check all your devices make sure your, your, your spam filters are correct and all that kind of thing because there certainly looks like there's good news coming all right let's get our lots of love for Aries for June You've got trust. Yeah, I trust that this transition, I want to say, that you're going through is for the best, is for your highest good, and is leading toward this Ten of Cups energy that you're really wanting. Next, uh, lots of uh, answers. It says it's promising. Very much promising. And then finally, we're going to get our lots of... I keep going to call it parable. This is my own thing that I did, my own divination symbol. I can't even think of the name of it. Proverbs, lots of Proverbs. Okay, here we go. What do we got here? 
A bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. Yeah, so something's being offered. The bird in the hand is like, take what's being offered. Something's being offered. It could be, you know, because it does line up with this tower, too, this Ace of Pentacles offer here. So it might be like shocking or coming out of left field, or maybe it's not, you know, it's li life is what happens when you're busy making other plans, right, to quote the great John Lennon. So it might not be according to your plan, you know, but you got to kind of roll with it. You know, Aries, you're great with doing that. You're great with rolling it, rolling with it. you got to roll with the changes. Keep on rolling. All right, Aries. Well, thank you so much for tuning in. If you want to find out more about this deck and how you can win a free reading, then go on to the end of the video and you can find out all about it. If you want to get in on the Solstice reading, you know, take a look at that. Um, that's on my website, and it's going to be for a limited time. Next, we're going to move on to the sign of Taurus. All right, Taurus. Well, you know, Gemini or Jupiter has moved out of your sign and into the sign of Gemini, but especially if you're Taurus rising, this could be really favorable for you. You know, Jupiter in the second house could be some really good money situations popping up for you. And then the solstice too, you know, that's always that turning point for everybody around the 20th. There's a big shift in energy when we get to these solstice, uh, the mid, well, any of the seasonal changes, whether it's the Aries, and the cardinal ingresses is really what it's called when the sun moves to a cardinal sign. But let's see what's coming in for our Taurus friends for the month of June of 2024. Well, look at that, the Ten of Cups. That was in the last reading, but from the other deck. Followed by the Magician. Oops, and next card we have is the Knight of Rods, some fire sign energy. Maybe it's the Aries, <laughs> since they had the Ten of Cups too. Maybe some of you are going to... Well, it looks like some of you will be interacting with the fire sign, but let's get the rest of the cards out before I jump in on all the interpretations here. Uh, let me find a place to put those cards as well. There we go. All right. This is for Taurus for the month of June of 24. What do we got? We've got the High Priestess. You've got the One and the Two of the Major Arcana right in a row. Nine of Rods and the Queen of Cups. Yeah, you need to trust your intuition around this time, Taurus. I mean, Taurus is, you know, you're creative, and when you're in the creative zone, you're absolutely tapping into that higher dimensional reality and that higher, you know, intuition. But sometimes, you know, you guys can be really like, I need to see it, you know, I want to see it in black and white. You know, you're very practical and down to earth. Your intuition is going to be right on this month here, Taurus, and it's leading you. The eight, you've got an idea, you've got a plan got this plan and you've got this thing that you're trying to f move forward with and you really want to do and you're getting some intuitive downloads about it but it looks as if you're not you're not trusting in it look at he's like looking at it like oh I don't know that yeah I got the I thought I saw something but oh no you know they're discounting it like throwing don't throw those things away or it could be even another person in your life because you have a queen of cups here in the same row um and the Queen of Cups is a water sign energy, a Scorpio, Cancer, Pisces. Could be referring to the solstice as we move into the water sign of Cancer. But also, you know, the Queen of Cups or any of the cup energy is very, very similar, very intuitive, very much, you know, listening to those subtle energies, paying attention to those signs from the universe, those breadcrumbs from the universe, right? So don't be, don't discount it, don't be on guard about it, because you're going to be getting some, it's going to help steer you towards this ultimate goal up here of the magician, of what you're really trying to go for and what you're really after. Ten of Cups is here, I mean, that is ultimate joy, happiness, love could be marriage, it's marriage and family. There feels like for some people there's going to be some kind of a big gathering, maybe somebody, you know, some kind of, maybe even a wedding, or but a family reunion or something, and there's this fire sign energy. This energy of the Queen of Cups feels more like trusting your intuitive nature, or giving that, giving that, you know, that, um, maybe it's even getting a reading, even if it's not from me, maybe getting a reading from somebody, but going into that, you know, that um, intuitive side, this is very action-oriented. This feels like another person who is, re they're down to help, you know, they're just ready and willing and able, they're all fired up, I'm hearing, all fired up and no place to go. So they're all fired up and no place to go, so you could be that guiding force, giving that direction of where to go and how to, because you're a great leader too, Taurus, you know, you're definitely a great leader in business and things. All right, let's go ahead and get your animal totem for our Taurus friends for the month of June. There we go. 
it's funny, the Apostle, that's very akin to the Hangman, which is also a highly spiritual card. The Apostle is a very spiritual card. And so you've got this whole lineup of the spiritual energy. You're going to be getting those downloads this month, Taurus. You're going to be getting those messages. Don't be so f in, the, oh, that, 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 I, that didn't mean anything. Or did I see something? Oh, I didn't see. It's just your imagination. You know, Don't be poo-pooing those little subtle things because it could totally be something really, really big, significant coming through. Okay, the opossum. Dreamer of dreams, seer of visions. Pause. Create space for enlightenment. Breathe. Keep your plans and ideas uh, private and know when to assert yourself and when to play dead. Yeah, take, I mean, I know you're charged up and ready to go, and this person's charged up and ready to go, but slow down, listen to those intuitive hunches because they have messages for you. Okay, I'm going to do a card from my all-seeing eye. This is just the prototype. It comes with a pendulum and different things. If you want to find out more about it, as well as how you could possibly win some cool giveaways, like a free readings and stuff, Go to the end of the video and uh, we'll have that information for you all about it. I'm going to do a deep dive on this deck at the end of this video, okay? But right now let's pull a card for Taurus for June. You've got the herbal medicine, you know. So the herbal medicine is all about a lot of different things. Yes, I have cannabis on here and mushrooms, but I also have, you know, the echinacea, garlic, lavender, you know, I have other... It's, it's about dealing with the plant kingdom. And in your case, I feel like for some of you, well, if you're if you're stressed and tense, you know, here, you maybe you could do some kind of herbal thing just to calm down. Even a chamomile tea. It doesn't have to be any kind of subs quote unquote substance, you know. Um, but that I feel like for some of you, this is the business you might be going into. And again, it could be all kinds of things. I mean, there's cannabis legalization all over happening. Maybe you're going to be, you know, be involved in that business or even invest in one. But also there's herbal creams, lotions, potions, you know. There's all sorts of things. And it does feel like there may be a tie-in into this big business plan that you're, or this thing that you're really trying to launch or get going. Okay, let me get reach into my lots and get lots of love. By the way, if you want to get in on the solstice reading, it's only available for a couple more weeks for the rest of this month. So if you want to find out how this energy might be affecting you, head over to my website and you can find out that information. But let's get this victim. Yeah, maybe this is why you have this thing. This is very much like a victim energy. He's been through the ringer. This guy has been through the ringer. So he's, he's reluctant to trust or he has his guard up or he has his, you know, his defense is up. Let's get your lots of answers. It says, surely. So that's a yes. That's an absolutely a yes, like for sure. Okay. And then finally, the lots of proverbs for Taurus. We've got work smart, not hard. Yeah, work smart, not hard. But also, that's where this intuitive stuff comes in again, you know. Maybe there's other ways to do things other than just, you know, Taurus, you like plow through. You get that, you know, you start like the, the bull in the china shop at times. Let's 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 feel into the energy. Let's look around. Let's take advice from other things. Let's look. Let's feel into what the universe is trying to show us because it could absolutely. And especially if you're Taurus rising, by the way, you know you've got Jupiter going in your second house. This is the one year where you could really make big strides in your financial house. You know, with gains. And I know Taurus likes to hear that. All right, Taurus. Well, thanks again so much for tuning in. If, be sure to check your sun, moon, and rising. If you want to get in on that reading, go head over to my website. If you want to hear more about my cool deck that I'm doing and the giveaway, just go on to the end of the video, and I'm going to take a deep dive, and we're going to go all into it, and we're going to find out all about it. Hello, Gemini, and happy birthday to all you June Geminis out there. I hope you're having a great time. Uh, you know, Jupiter's just moved into your sign, so this is like... I mean, every year of your birthday is very powerful for your solar return, right? But this year, because you've got Jupiter in the mix, I mean, it's uber powerful. It's like really you're setting your intention for the next Jupiter, for the next 12 years when you have Jupiter uh, in your sign. You should always do your, your solar return or your birthday is your astrological new year. And that's always a good time to do all your creating for the upcoming year, not January 1st. This is your personal astrological new year. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and get our, our three cards for Gemini for June 2024. Got the Magician, the Tower, and the Ten of Cups. Somebody, somebody else had Tower and Ten of Cups, and I believe it was with the other deck too. Isn't that interesting? So something. There's going to be a lot of. It seems to be a lot of clearing away of residue. 
leading to this Ten of Cups, but let's see here. Let's get our next three cards. You've got the world, beautiful energy, the world, the star, lovely, <clears throat> and finally the Queen of Cups. All right, so I'm hearing messages from beyond is what my guides just came through with, and that's definitely, can absolutely be the case when, we, when, we, when we're working with the, um, the star energy. Sorry, let me get my chair. I have hurt my back, so I'm, I'm moving a little slight to make sure I'm sitting in a good position. Uh, but anyways, yeah, here we go, the magician. So whatever you're trying to accomplish or do, it, it's going to be the world and beyond. This is, again, bringing in that Jupiter. It's super powerful. With the tower, it does seem like it could be a pretty drastic change for many people. But it's a change that's needed. It's a change that's, whose time has come. And what is it leading toward? It's leading towards the Ten of Cups. And the Ten of Cups is just the ultimate happiness, joy, love, um, celebration. It could be a marriage. It could be you're falling, love, falling in love. Uh, you're meeting the person of your dreams. Um, but it's it's going to bring about a big change in order to get here. And you must be the initiator of the change when the magician shows up. The magician shows up, you can work magic, but you it's about will and determination. And he goes forward, he's got everything on his table here to make whatever he wants to make happen. You can make your life happen right now more powerful than ever before or any time in recent history with your solar return and with the Gemini energy there and your new moon. So even if you're a late May Gemini, this is your time of your new moon. So you get your new moon every year. So super, super powerful. You've got this spiritual energy here. You've got this beautiful guidance from the star energy bringing down the blessings, helping you help from the other side. That bird is really grabbing me. I feel like for some of you, you're going to hear that bird singing in the morning, and you're going to know that that is a message from your spirit guides, or even perhaps someone who's passed over. Who this could be. This could be a family member, because this is the, the family. This could be a family member who's passed over, and they may be bringing you blessings from the other side. Maybe you're going to have a dream about them. Maybe it's even an actual inheritance or something along those lines. But it's it's not all about the material. This is definitely a heartfelt thing. Um, there's going to be signs and omens, so pay attention. They want to lead you to the world. It could be that someone in the family passed over, and if that's the case, too, that it's, it says that they're in a much better place. For somebody, that's definitely that, and they're saying they're not suffering anymore. But seeing as this represents the water energy, which is Scorpio, Cancer, Pisces, we could be talking about something happening right around the time of that solstice. As we move out of your sign of Gemini and then we move into the water sign of Cancer, that could be the signal or the turning point where this tower energy really steps in and happens. But my guides keep telling me all's well that ends well, all's well that ends well. So there is this major time of perhaps turbulence and major transformation, but it's leading to this Ten of Cups. It's leading to the world. Your spirit guides and angels are leading you into this direction. So it's a beautiful thing. Um, you know, if you want to make things happen, very often you have to, you know, with every new beginning comes the death of the old, you know. What are they trying to tell me? They're giving me a song. Oh, I'm not quite getting it. Okay, let's go ahead and get your animal totem for uh, Gemini's for the month of June. The frog, so that's that major transformation. It's not all that dissimilar. I'm going to adjust my back brace here because it's digging into my side a little bit. I'm wearing a back brace, a back reinforcement thing. Um, the frog is not all that dissimilar from the tower energy, actually, because it is this major transformation because the, the frog transforms, starts as the tadpole and the newt, and, you know, it goes through all these stages of, of development. And then, like, even the world, you know, that's the final stage of the tarot. We've come to the world. We've come to the end of the, the full potential, as the frog is also. The frog also leaps, so this is big changes. Rainmaker, alchemist, clairaudient. Yeah, you may be getting, hearing messages. Hear that bird singing again, I'm getting. Fertility, transformation, metamorphosis, safe passage into the netherworld, the final stages of growth you have arrived. Yeah, for sure, there's some big transformation. And with Jupiter, it's just amplifying everything for you. So major transformation in a big way. Okay, let's get, um, get some shuffle going here. 
and we're going to get our, um, I'm just going to say Animal Totem, but this is actually from my All Seeing Eye Oracle deck that's up and coming. It's actually ending, the, the Kickstarter ends the first week of June, so if you haven't heard about it or you want to know more, go to the end of the video where I'm going to do a deep dive all about it. But let's go ahead and get your card for you. It says Earth. Okay. So Earth is about grounding in the Earth. You could be talking about uh, dealing with some kind of an Earth sign person. You may want to ground your own energy in the Earth when this card comes out and go dig in the dirt and get your hands in the dirt. We could, we'll always want to look at the astrology when these elemental cards come up and we are having an Earth event here in the full moon right after the solstice when it goes into Cancer. The very next day we've got a full moon in Capricorn which is an earth sign too. So it could be something happening, again, right around that transitional period. Uh, but, you know, stay grounded in the earth because this, this is some, also some powerful energy. I mean, you could be like sort of blasting off. I mean, Gemini, you're an air sign already. So, you know, you're going to need to stay grounded during this transition, but it's taking you to new heights, my guides are saying. Okay, let's get your uh, lots of love. You've got kindred. So there's a kindred spirit here, whether it's somebody coming into your life in the form of a relationship, it definitely could here with this Ten of Cups, or if it's somebody who's passed over and it's like a you know spirit guy, they're on the spirit side and they're helping you still, and they're still kindred, they're still attached to you. It says a stitch in time saves nine. Yeah, so be careful. Don't be, this is where this earth energy can come in. Don't be rushing through things. Take your time. Make sure you do it right the first time because you're dealing with some pretty important things or even some pretty profound changes, my guys are saying. I forgot that this will get this one. You got a maybe for that. Yeah, a maybe. I wouldn't be so so pushy about how I want it to go in my mind. This is a time to kind of surrender to spirit. Put your order in with the at the restaurant of the universe and, and just wait for it to be served up on a silver platter, basically. That's what they're saying. All right, Gemini. Well, yeah, if you want to get in on the astrology reading that I'm offering, the solstice reading, it's about the solstice, but it also goes into every astrological event that's happening. It's going to be available only till the end of this month. And it also, since Jupiter is in your sign, that would be also a, very, very, uh, a major astrology thing that we would be covering in this reading and other things too. Jupiter's trying Pluto. There's a whole bunch of stuff, but check it out if you're interested. And next we're going to move on to the sign of Cancer. I've lost my little stack of tiles here. Here they are. All right, Cancer. Well, you're another one. Happy birthday to all the Cancers out there who are June Cancers. You know, even if you're not a June Cancer, if you're July, your birthday's in July, you know, um, and this is for sun rising and moon all, but, you know, if you're a July baby, it's still impactful because of that solstice. That is when the sun enters into your sign. When you move into this cardinal energy, like you, your, your Cancer, Cancer, Capricorn, Aries, Libra, these are the cardinal signs, and when we cross that that line into your sign, that's when things happen. That's when we have the shift. That's when we have the change of seasons. So it is a turning point for everybody, and it's definitely impactful to you. And again, I am offering that Cancer Solstice reading. It's an astrology reading. It'll be available for a limited time where we do a deep dive into all that. So you can head to my website and find out more about that. But let's get three cards going here. For our cancers, we'll start with the Rock and Roll Tarot. One, two, and three. We've got the Emperor, followed by the Ten of Pentacles. Wow, look at that. Followed by the Hierophant. All right. Next, we're going to get three cards from the um, Hanson Roberts deck for our cancer friends. We've got one, two, three. We've got the Four of Cups. Next, we have the Queen of Swords. Gemini, perhaps, and the Empress. So somebody could even be turning up pregnant when the Empress card shows up. Maybe it's the Queen of Swords. So this could be an oh, air sign person, Aquarius, a Gemini, or a Libra. Or we may be talking about in the time of Gemini. That's everything before we go into your sign on the 20th. We'll be in Gemini up to that moment when we turn corner into solstice. The other air sign thing that is this month is we've got the 6th, the new moon in Gemini on the 6th. So it could be like that. Maybe somebody find out you're pregnant or whatever. This could be this person. Somebody's making you an offer, 
And, you know, when the Empress, yes, it's the pregnancy card, and it does represent that, but when the Empress shows up with this card, and it's particularly with the Emperor, this could also strongly relate to business and finance. The Ten of Pentacles is known as the big money card. It's the largest money card in the entire tarot. We're dealing with some large amounts of money, and some powerful guys are saying some movers and shakers. So there's this emperor is this person in control. doesn't necessarily have to be a male energy. It could be anybody. The person who makes the decisions. The person who's the boss. And um, the hero fan, also this could be like when this whole lineup here, this could be a big like corporation, a big corporate deal. And even if you're kind of a freelance person or that's not your jam, you know, you're not looking to do the nine to five corporate job, that doesn't mean that they can't be involved. You could get in there as a freelancer. Maybe they're going to back or support you, endorse you. You know, there's all sorts of ways that this could come into play. And this is nothing, this offer is coming in here. This is nothing that you would really want to turn your back on, I wouldn't think. You know, it looks like very wonderful. And if you, this is the emperor, I mean, you got the emperor and the empress. The empress, in addition to be the, you know, the create, the uh, pregnancy and the abundance, the harvest time and everything. Um, it could also, it just talks about being creative, because what's more creative than you're creating a body and you're, you know, you're creating a, a person in your body there. But it, it could be the crea anything you're creating, anything you're trying to create. It feels like for some people, like the emperor's going to take note and want to know more about you. This could even be, perhaps if you're a writer or something, this could be like a publisher or somebody wanting to you know, talk to you, or for some people it could be like somebody's going to get their movie made or something along that. Like this big business is coming in to kind of support you in whatever this Empress energy is. The other thing that the Empress with this, because uh, she's the harvest in a northern hemisphere, that's autumn, and this could be Libra time too. So it might be something that's happening now, but it may not come to full fruition until we get to the time of Libra or, you know, October. Let's get your animal totem and see what we have for our cancer friends for the, the month of June and the big solstice event. Got the bee. Well, you know, when you get the bee and the empress, it's highly likely for many people there's going to be a, you know, a pregnancy because that's the birds and the bees and all that stuff. But let's read it. But it could also be, you know, you're working. You're doing busy as a bee, getting your project together. Uh, fertility, abundance, creativity, propagation, strong connection to home and family. Accomplishing tasks in a timely manner, tasting the sweet nectar of life. Yeah, it's like you're going to really be tasting that sweet nectar this month, Cancers. It's very abundant. There's no, I mean, it's just all very positive cards. And there's this higher, this hierarchy up here, these powers that be that are just really taking notice of you and are really wanting to work with you, back with you, support you. Okay, for uh, this is my card, uh, the All Seeing Eye Oracles, which is on Kickstarter until the new moon in Gemini. So if you haven't heard about it and you want to learn more about how to support me and get this deck printed and also win some cool prizes, go to the end of the video. I'll do a deep dive. But right now we're going to look at your Nirvana. This is the ultimate card. This is the culmination. This is the last. It's a 50 card deck. This is the last card in the deck. So it means that you've really reached this pinnacle. You've really reached this place. Really, it's about enlightenment, but it's about whatever you're striving for here. You know, it looks like you know you're striving to get. Well, maybe some of you may have been trying to get pregnant for a long time, so you're finally going to have the baby. But really, for the most part, it feels like it's more along the lines of these financial gains and things like this. So you're finally there, you're finally getting that recognition that you want, you're finally getting the project off the ground and things are finally, you know, you're, you're reaching this, the end goal or at least it's within sight, you know, it's, it's, you're well on your way, the guides are saying, okay. Let's get the uh, lots of love for Cancer friends. We've got outgoing. Yeah, because sometimes Cancers, you can get a little bit, you crawl on your shell or something. This is a time to do those, you know, especially with that solar return, that new moon. Well, the new moon will be next time, but this solstice and, you know, the stuff that's happening with the astrology. This is the time to put yourself out there because you're empowered right now. You're shining. You're glowing. People are notice you. You know, people want to be, the, you, you have that attraction factor going on. Okay, let's get our thing. It's a definitely for our lots of answers. And then finally, we're going to pull from the lots of proverbs. These are all my creations, by the way. The rock and roll tarot, the animal totem, these lots, and then, of course, my new upcoming deck, which I'm trying to get off the ground myself here. Let's see what you got. 
Oh, get out while the getting's good. Yeah, well, make those shifts and changes. I would even change this to get in while the getting's good. You know, that's kind of more along the lines of what I'm feeling for you. Because you've got this powerful solstice energy. You've got these great cards. You've got the ear or the eye of these people in position of authorities that can take you and help you get up to this next level of whatever the case may be here. And you're just sitting in this wonderful abundance. You know, it's just abundant. Abundance is on here. Abundance is definitely part of the Empress energy. And abundance is definitely part of the Ten of Pentacles energy. So enjoy it while it's last. it lasts here, Cancer. Do use that solar event of the sun, the, sol the longest day of the year in the Northern Hemisphere, shining on you and all of the people in your sign. And, you know, make a go of it. This is the time to put yourself out there. Get out of your shell, okay? All right, Cancers, well, thanks again so much for tuning in. Remember to check your rising and moon in this video. If you want to get that solstice reading, we'll really take a deep dive and take a look at your chart from a psychic perspective, and we do an animal totem. It's for the upcoming season. You can find that information on, the, uh, on my website. It'll be available for a limited time. And don't forget, if you want to know more about my all-seeing eye uh, thing, my deck here, and how you can win prizes, go to the end of the video. All right, Leo. <coughs> Hello, Leo. Thanks for tuning in. This is for Leo Sun Sign, Leo Rising Sign, and Leo Moon Sign for the month of June of 2024. Well, the solstice is powerful for everybody. In your case, especially if you're Leo Rising, you know, it is going to be in your 12th house. So it could be something having to do with the past, or, you know, sometimes it's something a little bit more subtle. Maybe you have a, it might be a little bit more subtle and not so in your face. So pay attention to those subtle hints throwing out from the universe, pay attention to your dreams, and you know, those kinds of things. Let's see what we're going to have here for our Leo friends for the month of June of 2024. Leo Sun Rising Moon, we've got the Five of Swords for the first card, Four of Cups, followed by the Magician. Boy, that Magician has been out in both decks. It's been out in this deck and that deck both. So it feels like, you know, a lot of people, maybe it's just the Jupiter and Gemini or the turning of the corner of the solstice, but it feels like things are really getting moving for a lot of people here. I know that Saturn is going retrograde at the end of the month, but I didn't include it in the video, but let's see what we got here for our Leos. That's not, you know, I don't know, that's not the biggest event of the month, the solstices. Okay, three of cups, some kind of happiness and celebration, three of um, pentacles, two threes. And then the moon card. All right. Well, anytime we get that moon card, we always want to look at the moon lunar events. So we've got the new moon again on Gemini on the 6th. So that's a time for new beginnings, although it's in your 12th house if you're Leo rising. And then secondly, I see a little smudge on here that bugs me when I see that stuff. I've got to take care of it. And then secondly, the after, right after the solstice, there's that full moon in Capricorn. That's going to be so powerful. The moon is also, though, like, going into your intuition, going into your dreams. For some, it could even have something to do with your own mother. Whatever the case here, this is a card of being like at a stalemate or stuck or you can't get through or, you know, people not cooperating or not getting along. And it, that's all breaking free this month. It really looks like you're really breaking. If you've been experiencing some of this kind of energy, you're breaking free, you're breaking out of it. Um, there's an offer coming whether it's through, sometimes because this comes out of the clouds, sometimes this can be an offer from spirit, like on that moon energy. Maybe you'll get a dream and they're trying to communicate and show you or tell you something. But maybe it's just, um, you know, your own intuition. But whatever the case, it sparks something in you, Leo. It really sparks something. This magician is like, you're, you're, you're not doubting yourself anymore. You're not caring what other people think about your ideas. This isn't the time to say, hey, what do you think? And get yourself talked out of it. This is the time to hit the ground running and take that ball and run with it. There's some parties and celebrations coming up, perhaps a solstice celebration, or perhaps there's some other thing. If there's nothing specific coming up, or even, a, well, we'll have a, no, the holiday, 4th of July in the U.S. will be in July. Duh. You know, there could be some holiday. There's Father's Day, I think, um, in the U.S., but whatever the case, this is a time to be sociable, and that's you anyway, Leo. You are so sociable. That's totally your, in your wheelhouse. That's totally your jam. You're going to be working on a project, perhaps with other people. The way these two, I want to put these two together. Yeah, I want to put this Three of Cups in this together. It almost feels like, or this could even be... You know what this has a feeling like? Sort of an old school, like a barn raising, where everybody gets together and 
builds the barn for the person or quilting bee. You know, it has this old like pioneer kind of vibe to it for some reason. That kind of energy is coming through. But everybody cooperating and creating something beautiful. Or maybe it's even a community garden where everybody's going to go together and we're going to have our gardens together. You know, things like this. It feels like cooperation, but we're also building something too. All right, let's move over and get our animal totem for our Leo friends for the month of June of 2024. We've got the grasshopper that's big leaps and bounds. You're leaping from one. You know why the grasshopper leaps? Because it always wants to be in the sunlight. It wants to bask in the sun. And that's you, Leo. You're ruled by the sun. That's your energy for sure. Okay, let's read this. Health, blessings, fertility, the gift of song. You know, you're, many Leos are singers and performers. Inspired creations reveals your true spirit. Inspired creations, yes. Reincarnation, discovering your soul path. Advancement by leaps and bounds, yeah. Advancement by leaps and bounds. I feel like somebody's going to have a grasshopper. They're going to see that or it's going to jump on your shoulder or jump on your arm or something. And you're going to get some really cool confirmation about that. Oh, these are all flipping, but um, I'm going to put them back because there's just too many. Let's get this all back in here. This is my upcoming deck. Hopefully, I'm in a Kickstarter for it, a fundraiser. I'm not going to talk too much about it here because at the end of this video, if you want to learn more about how you can win prizes and more about the deck, you can go to the end of the video, and I'm going to do a deep dive into the whole thing. But let's pull a card from the uh, All-Seeing Eye Oracle for Leos for June. You've got the sound. See, it's funny. There's music mentioned in here, and then you've got the sound thing. This card is not... I have also another card that's actually music. This card isn't exclusively just music. This is like sound bath, sound healing. Um, this is the resonance. This is like setting up, you know, maybe putting some chimes in your home, or maybe even, you know, the singing bowls, or going to a sound bath or something like that. But it's not, it's also, sound is music. I mean, we can't, we're not going to rule out music, but it's not exclusively music. But it's like, and even the sounds of the grasshopper has that chirping, or they play, you know, you ever see the cartoons where they're, they're playing the violin on their legs and stuff. Remember those cartoons from back in the day? So some of you, you know, definitely go where the music is. Have some fun. Maybe some of you, maybe that's the thing that you're all mutually working on. Maybe you're going to be in a music project of some kind. I'm sure many Leos are... Uh, you know, I always like uh, my best lead singers, the front persons of any band I've ever been in has been a Leo. You're always the good, you know, because you're not afraid to just, you know take the lead and put that put on that show you show you have a lot of showmanship right okay let's get your lots of love we've got just the word love so follow that love vibe follow your heart because that is your key luminary you're ruled by the you're ruled by the heart you're ruled by the sun and you're ruled by the heart okay let's get your lots of answers it says perhaps so that's a maybe and then finally let's get the lots of proverbs for leo for June, make hay while the sun shines. Yeah, that's you all day. Because again, there's that sun energy. So get out in the sun. Be shine like the sun. Shine like the sun. Shine on your crazy diamond. Yeah, shine like the sun because that again, that's you. You are ruled by the sun. You're ruled by the heart chakra. Embrace that. Don't get caught up in this. You know, usually you're not that way, Leo. Usually you're pretty lighthearted and you let things roll off. But it does seem like there's a, something that's sort of maybe gnawing at you a little bit. And you are a fixed sign, so you can get into that mode a little bit. Throw that to the caution to the wind. Let's get rid of this. Let's clear your field with some nice music and sound resonance. Let's get into our intuitive vibe. Let's be with like-minded people who want to build the same kind. Maybe it's just to build that community or that house, or, you know, that that neighborhood or just be around people who are more like you and if there's like if you have you know there's discord around you get in an environment where you can really be your true self and let your soul your soul shine and let your soul shine shine till the light of day all right leos well thanks so much for tuning in for your reading be sure to check your rising and moon and if you want to get in on the solstice reading there's a limited amount of time it'll be it. this is the last month to get in on that it's an in-depth astrology look for the upcoming season. We look at everything, not just the solstice point. And also, if you want to help me out with this deck, I really want to get this deck printed with all the extra trinkets and everything. Go to the end of the video to learn more about that. In other words, have a great month, and uh, we'll talk to you again soon. Hello, Virgo. Thank you so much for tuning in for your 
June of 2024 psychic tarot reading with animal totem and all the other stuff. You know, it's the solstice, so it is a big time of transformation and change for everybody as we move into the new season. We turn a corner. Um, there's actually quite a bit going on astrology-wise. If you want to find out about that, about how it might affect you, you can look at the solstice reading. We've got the Pluto going into Aquarius, Jupiter in Gemini. There's a whole bunch of stuff. But right now we're going to do tarot from the first the Rock and Roll tarot deck. Three cards for our Virgo friends. Sun, rising, moon. First card is Empress. Could be a pregnancy. Next card is the Magician. Again, that Magician. Boy, has that card bent out this month. And then the Two of Rods here. So that is the card of partnerships. Let's get three more cards from the Hanson Roberts for our Virgo friends for the month of June of 2024. First card is the Four of Cups, followed by the Star. We have the Star in that same spot in somebody's reading. And then the Page of Rods. Okay. Well, you know, definitely abundance. We've got all this abundance around here with the Empress card. Very much could be a pregnancy. The Empress often does mean a pregnancy. That's the kind of the main meaning of the card. But it also just is abundance. It's harvest. It's getting, being in that place of, the Empress doesn't chase, okay? The Empress sits on her throne and the abundance comes for her because she knows that she's abundant. And you definitely have some very strong help from spirit guides and angels here with the star card in this prominent position. The star is going to be guide you towards your true north with this magician. He's pointing upward. He's pointing north. You're being guided. And you're being guided by what you really, what, what turns you on, what lights your fire. You know, there's the fire energy. That's their solstice energy. There's the sun. I don't know if you can see that. But his medallion has like a sun on it. So it's coming in clearly or not. But it's, see, that's the, and the sun is, the solstice is the sun. In the northern hemisphere, it's the longest day of the year. I do believe it's a Sagittarius moon. So I was going to say, this can also talk about fire sign element, which there's nothing major, but I do believe that the solstice is, for some reason, I thought it was a sad moon. I had that in my mind. Yeah, it is. Yeah, the solstice in the northern hemisphere, uh, at eastern time, 20th, and, and the moon will be in Sagittarius at that time. So this very much is pulling me to, as the solstice for a timer for you. You could get some great news right around that solstice time some kind of an offer, maybe even a job offer or an offer, it could be an offer of love for some people, you know, but it's going to put you in this beautiful, beautiful place. The Two of Rods is a great card also. If this is about a relationship, the Two of Rods, Rods says that you will make a great partnership. This is the card that I always look for more than any love cards. If people are looking for a relationship, reading and this card comes up, this is the st one of the strongest indicators that you could have a successful long-term relationship. Okay, And that could be a relationship of any type. It might be a love relationship, it might be a work relationship. Because this is saying that you're on the same page, you basically see this, you have the same outlook on life, you both want to go in the same direction, and it's going to be successful for a long-term partnership of whatever type. Um, for somebody here, this is way out there. It might just be for one or two people, but I'm getting that this is somebody's coming back. They're going to be reincarnated. It's kind of way out there. It's a little woo-woo, but I'm definitely picking that up strong. If there's somebody who's passed over, and like it was an older person, so it wasn't a, well, maybe in some cases not. Somebody that was a teenager who maybe died in a car accident, but they're going to be reincarnating back into your life, whether it's through your own you know, you're having the baby, or maybe it's somebody in your family, or a close friend or somebody, but they're coming back into the earth plane, and they've, you've already known them in this life, and then they're going to come back, and their life was, somebody, it was very old. Some people, it's going to be different for everybody. I feel like it's true for a few, at least a few people. There was a death, and it feels like, too, there might be some kind of significance Maybe they'll have the same name or the same birthday or there's going to be some little clue or they'll like the same music or something. You know, when, for somebody there's going to be playing a music and the baby's going to light up and you're going to be like, oh my God, that was mom or dad's favorite song. Or It's going to be one of those kind of really, you know, synchronic, cool synchronicities going on like that. But with the music, too, if they're coming through it, that's going to be prevalent for other in other instances, too. Like, if you hear a song on the radio and it reminds you of somebody who's passed, 
know that that's them sending you a message and that they are with you. So you are going to be, somebody's going to be getting those messages with the music. All right, let's get our animal totem card for our Virgo friends for the month of June. The lion. The lion is, you know, I, I, when I pulled the lion, I heard, hear me roar. <laughs> What's that old song? I am woman, hear me roar. <laughs> Well, you know, the the Empress is very much a, a woman, Cardi. I try to not do gender, but Empress is definitely a, a woman, okay? All right, majestic, generous, fierce, and proud, courageous, king of the beasts. Sublime leadership inspires loyalty. Well, there's you being a leader. Delegate authority and bask in the sun. So, yeah, Leo, this lion, which is Leo, rules, the sun rules Leo. So there's that solar thing again, and then we've got the solar thing here. You know, with the Leo, well, the lion card, technically, and the um, solar thing here and the fire energy, we might be talking about something that you're putting into place here. It may not come to full fruition until we get into the sign of Leo next month as we move into late July and August for some. Or you could even be dealing with a Leo or maybe somebody's expecting and the child's going to be born in the time of Leo. But there could be some tie into Leo or even the person who passed on, maybe they were a Leo. All right. Next, we're going to pull a card from my upcoming deck. I'm, I'm in the middle of a Kickstarter. It's a really cool deck. and Also, it's not only a, a divination deck, but it comes with a pendulum. I want it to come with a pendulum and some other cool stuff. If you want to learn more about it, and hopefully you can help me spread the word and win a free reading, if you're watching this bef in the first before the first week of June, head to the end of the video, and I'm going to do a deep dive where you can find out more. But right now, I'm just going to pull you a card for Virgo for June. Mending Fences. Yeah. Well, mend, but it's really mending fences. This is about patching things up in a relationship. This is about reconciliation. I feel like, too, going back to this star card and how I was picking up, it was up for some, it's going to be this, you know, on the other side, the spiritual connection. For some of them, I feel like they know what they did. You know, when you get out, when you get out of body and you see things from the big perspective, that's often the case. You know, these people that have passed on, they see how they hurt you or how they did you wrong. And they're, they're wanting, this is a card of not only mending fences as far as in the physical world, or we're going to make up, or we're going to bury the hatchet, or we're going to, you know, mend that fence. But it's also about forgiveness, too. Very much about forgiveness. It's also got that heart on it, too. And the heart chakra is also around the Leo energy. So it's bringing in that Leo energy again. So some of you may be dealing with the Leo on whatever, whatever level. If it's in real life, or if it's somebody on the spirit plane, or the upcoming birth of the child. You know, there's definitely a lot of Leo energy coming through in multiple ways in this spread. Okay, let's go ahead and get our lots of love. You've got a friend. Yeah, so somebody's a friend. This could be a friend's child. This could be, again, the two of rods is really about the friendship. And if you want a successful long-term relationship, I mean, there's got to be that underlying friendship for it to last. You know, that's... That's a big thing. Okay, let's see here. I'm hearing that Golden Girls. Thank you for being a friend. Here we got here. Your answer is obviously travel down the road and back again. The heart is true. All right, what's the lots of proverb? It says, if you can dream it, you can do it. Yeah, and you have. When I said those words out loud, if you can dream it, that star just grabbed me right back into that star energy. Because that is about your dreams. You know, the star will help you. If that's communing. I'm going to have to move, make, make, make a little noise here. I'm having some back issues. So I'm having trouble getting comfortable in this chair. Um, you know, this could be um, like having that. Um, well, that can make things better. That made it worse. Hold on. I'm sorry, Virgos. Uh, you know, that could be um, uh, the dream, you know, maybe they're sending you messages through your dreams, you know, these spirit guides, these angels, these people on the other side, or your higher self, or whatever the case may be. But you can do it by co-creating with your spirit guides and angels, or people who've passed on, or whatever the case may be. It's very prevalent. It's grabbing me stronger than any card in this spread right now, that star energy. So you're definitely having this blessing of the star energy around you at this time, Virgos. All right, well, I hope this reading resonated. If it didn't, definitely check your rising and moon. Um, 
if you want to get in on the solstice reading, that's an in-depth like astrology. It will only be available to the end of this month. I know many have ordered already, and many of you do order every year. So if you haven't got yours yet, check it out if you're interested. If you want to learn more about how to win a free reading through the Kickstarter promotion that I'm doing, if you're watching this before the first week of June, head up to the end of the video, and I'm going to go into a deep dive, um, a detailed explanation all about the deck and everything else. Next, we're going to move on to the sign of Leo. I'm sorry, Libra, not Leo. <laughs> well, Libra, you know, you've been in the spotlight so much with these eclipses and everything that's going on. So there's not a lot, a whole lot happening directly to you uh, this month. But with the Jupiter and Gemini and all that stuff, that's making a charm to your air energy. And the other thing is, another thing is about you, you are one of the cardinal signs. So whenever we have a cardinal ingress, which is what the solstice is, it's the four cardinal signs, you know, it's in Cancer, but you're over here in Libra, it makes a square, and squares make things happen. So you, the cardinal signs always will f maybe feel that shift of seasons, which is the solstice is what I'm talking about. They may feel it a little more, perhaps, than some of the other signs, okay? All right, Libra, let's go ahead and get your first three cards for the month of June of 24. For our Libra friends, we've got, let's see here, we've got the Nine of Rods, feeling a little bit on guard. Next, we have the Judgment card, end of a karmic cycle. Well, that's going on a lot for you. And then the Queen of Cups, that's going on a lot for you, this karmic cycle, because of the nodes being in your sign and the eclipses being in your sign. So many of you are completing these big karmic cycles, that's for sure. Okay, let's do three cards for Libra. We've got the Six of Rods, Triumph and Victory. We've got the Two of Rods, Seeing the Way Clear, Seeing Your Path Clear for the Bright Future. And the Nine of Rods twice. Now that's interesting. So, I mean, this is overall really a very positive and great reading with the Judgment. These two cards, these are all very positive. But, you've got this card twice. This is a card of being on guard. Being trepidatious, not being trusting that it's true, not trusting in your own vision because of things that has happened in the past. Because they're, look, they're both looking at the past, but you've got this two of rods. This is a great card. It's a clear vision. The path is clear. It's just, you know, it's open and blue skies. The sun is rising. This feels very connected to the solstice with that sun rising. You've got the world in your hand. You see the direction you're meant to go in. And you're backed and supported with this triumph victory. You've got the goods. i got the tools to satisfy. What is that? Keeping the dream alive. Ah, I don't know what that song is. I think it's Aerosmith. i got the tools to satisfy. Whatever. <laughs> if you've never seen my readings, I do break into song. That's a way that my guides often will communicate with me. But you've got the goods. You've got what it takes to succeed. But your own self-doubt and your own self-sabotage you know, um, is standing in your way. That's the biggest obstacle that you're facing. Whatever this was, the reason, whatever the reason is that you're going there, because this whatever have happened in the past or this or that, the judgment card is here. You've completed that karmic cycle. You don't have to keep repeating that thing over and over again. And then whenever this card comes up, I always want to look at what is the horn of the angel pointing at? It's pointing right down here. You have a viable plan. You have the path, the way that you're looking, the direction you want to go in. It's positive. It's doable. And you have support. You've got the, the experience, the knowledge, the support from others. So you can put your staff down. You know, I'm hearing that. Throw down your gun, you might shoot yourself. Is that what you're trying to do? Dun, 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 dun. No, it's been a good friend of mine. And I don't, and I wish it were down. Da, 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 da. Yeah, throw down your gun, you might hurt yourself. You are hurting yourself by having this stance or this worry. It's open. It's wide open. And this energy over here of the Queen of Cups. Now, this is some water sign energy, but it could also just be this whole thing again of the timing. There's so many things. This is a huge sun back here. The sun here. It's very much I'm pulled towards the solstice energy. By the time the 20th hits, you should be hitting the ground. Look at the 20 on here. That's the date, too, 20th. You should be hitting the ground running. You, the only thing standing in your way is your own negative thoughts. And that's not usually a Libra thing. I mean, usually you guys are pretty positive and, and have a good outlook. But it's something that from the past, you know, with eclipses and the nodes in your sign, there are all these karmic things that are coming up. And many Libras are dealing with all these 
karmic entanglement. So at the solstice time, let's turn a corner, let's count our blessings, let's believe in ourselves and believe in, you know, that we can, we have a good plan that's viable and doable. All right, let's get the uh, animal totem. The camel, yeah. The camel is also has a sun on it, too. But the camel can go very long ways without, um, without running out of gas. You know, they have endurance and lasting. Whatever you have here has lasting. It's got staying power, okay? Let's read the, the words here. Dragon of the desert, wayfaring soul, sure-footedness amidst the shifting sands, overcoming insurmountable odds, preparing for the journey ahead. Yeah, because the two is only, you're only at the beginning of the journey. You've only, we've only just begun. <laughs> You've only just begun on this new pathway. So get out of your own way and allow it to unfold in the most positive way because it's, it has, it's the promise of success here. You have the promise of success. All right, Libra. Let's get your, this is the all-seeing car, all-seeing eye, my prototype for my new deck that I'm promoting. And you can win a free reading by helping me promote it if you're watching this before June 6th, so head over to the end of the video to find out all the details. And let me go ahead and get the uh, one card for you in this reading. You've got the journey card. The journey of, and the journey card is again a big card about trusting, about following your true north star, following your inner guide, your inner compass. Even if the skies are dark and you really can't maybe see where you're going, there's no land around. They don't know where they're going, you know, they don't. But they're trusting their guidance system. And they're navigating with the stars, you know. So could be well be a good time for an astrology consultation, or maybe you'd even get into astrology or something like that, or maybe you'd get into astronomy. But I think it just kind of really pulls this whole thing together about like you're moving forward in the future. The universe is you're going to be. This is a card of journey, but it's like a journey of your life. Like you're traveling forward, and you're it's it's you're going to get past all this. You've just got to believe, believe to achieve. Yeah. All right, let's get the, um, I'm hearing that, heads across the water, childish. Yeah, maybe some of the stuff that happened here in the back was kind of childish. I'm hearing heads across the water, though. What is that? Heads across the water, water, heads across the sky. We do, we do, be a gypsy, get around. Get your feet up off the ground. We do, we do, get around. Dum, 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 dum. <laughs> I don't know what song that is. Du, 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 du. It was a butterfly. Whatever. Let's move on. Because <laughs> I, 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 what I noticed when that song came in about heads across the water, the, he's looking out across the water and then this is sailing across the water. Some of you may be taking a trip, you know, across the pond or something too. But let's see here. Yes, no, maybe. He said yes. It's a definite yes. Believe it. Believe to achieve. Yeah. All right. One more for the Libra. It says, be careful what you wish for. Yeah, because, you know, not, maybe not what you wish for, but when you when this card shows up twice, you know, I really normally wouldn't give this card so much attention, but the fact that it showed up twice, you know, because the rest of the reading is so positive. If you're wishing, <clears throat> worry, worry is a form of wishing for something that you don't want to happen to happen. So let's not get into worry zone. Let's know that whatever that was before, that's before, and this is the new day is dawning. And you're, you're, it's a new journey, and it's a new day, and you have the strength and endurance. Be, beyond this, this guaranteed victory, you have the strength and endurance to get through this, to get past it, and get through these eclipse cycles. I think that's going to be a big thing. That's why so many Libras, that life may be kind of in a little bit of an uproar, some turbulence. But you can do it, you know, you're, 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 you're fully equipped here, okay, Libra? Hey, well, thanks for tuning in, everybody. If you want to get that solstice reading, you've got about to the end of this month. And if you want to find out more about these cards and how you can win a free reading, please go to the end of the video, because I can use your support, and I really want to get it printed with all the little extra doodads and everything that I have, okay? All right, so next we're going to move on to the sign of Scorpio. Well, Scorpio, always at the solstice, that's always a nice vibe for you, too. Especially with all this air energy, you know. It's, I think I mentioned this in one of the recent readings. You know, Scorpios don't like a lot of chatter and noise and 
you know, the Scorpios are pretty, kind of a little bit on the stoic side, and they like their, you know, you're vibing, you're vibing with the energy and the grooves. You're not really one that's, you know, because that's Gemini energy and Jupiter and Gemini and all this air energy can be a little bit overwhelming or too much for, um, and I'm hearing that, too much for the man. What is that? Midnight train to Georgia. <clears throat> He's leaving. <laughs> But anyways, you know, you when it when the energy shifts over to that water sign energy, you know, that's that's your vibe. That's your wheelhouse. That's where Scorpio likes to be. And that's more along the lines of your, you know, your chill vibe that you that you carry. Let's see what the three cards for Scorpio are for June. What do we have here? We've got the Queen of Pentacles, could be looking at that full moon, followed by the Five of Cups, followed by the Ace of Pentacles. Alright. It's money showing up. And then we're going to do another little quick shuffle here, as I did shuffle already. One more little quickie, and let's get the three cards for the Scorpio below. We've got the Six of Cups, we've got the Three of Pentacles, and we've got the Six of Pentacles. All right. Well, it looks like some of you, it could be, you could be reviving some kind of project or work opportunity that was from the past here that you gave up on. Because this is a card of looking at the past and looking at the spilled cups and everything that went wrong. But whenever this card shows up, you have to realize that all is not lost. Because yes, there was some disappointment or things didn't go right here, but there's still cups left. He's just not turned around to see them yet. And also the Six of Cups is another card of reconciliation from the past, happiness coming from the past, happiness and joy coming from the past. So some, there's a big tie into something from the past that's going to come back around and be great for you. It looks like it could, it definitely feels like money and job related with all these pentacles. Ace of Pentacles, newfound income, newfound money, Some maybe a job you applied for and you didn't get the call, now they're going to call you back, or maybe they're hiring again and you put in your application and you get the call. Could be a project that you're just trying to do on your own and maybe it was just too much, but now maybe it's got it's breathing new life into it. There's breathing new life into something. And we do have this uh, King, Queen of Pentacles here. Now the Queen of Pentacles is a earth sign energy. Could be a person for sure. Could be a, an earth sign person, a Taurus, a Capricorn, or Virgo. But it could also be, we're, we're going to have this lunar event, the full moon of Capricorn, right after the solstice. So it could be something right around that turning point when we move it into that solstice and then we move to the earth sign moon the next day and have that full moon. Could be something showing up around that time. But also, you know, the Queen of Pentacles or any of the Pentacle court cards, which are the people, you know, they're always, uh, the Pentacles is the coin, the money. So even if they're not earth sign um, astrology wise, they could totally be, you know, um, the money person. This might just be the money person. Or maybe you try to apply for a grant or some kind of funding and then you know you get the news that you came came through. Because something that you're building, you're starting here and then you're building it, and you're gonna get the money, you're gonna get the reimbursement, you're gonna get the raise, you're gonna get the job, you're gonna get the backing, the endowment. You know, so it's definitely a, gonna be a very positive time for income. Well, you know, if you're Scorpio rising this Jupiter stuff is in your 8th house of other people's money. So it's highly likely that there could be some kind of funding or money coming your way. Let's get our animal totem for our Scorpios for the month of June of 2024. Scorpio, the ant. So working hard. Yeah, you're working hard here and you're working hard there, but you know, you're, gonna, you're making progress. You know, ants work hard, but ants are part of a team, too. And this could also be team. This could be a friend or work partner or a work associate from the, back, from the past showing back up. Let's read this. Working tirelessly for the good of all, connecting with community and knowing your place in it, you can move mountains and make miracles happen. Well, that's great news, right, Scorpio? All right, let's get... Now, this is my all-seeing eye deck. This is just a prototype that I'm working on getting printed. Um, it's in the Kickstarter until the first week of June, and um, there's a contest where you can win free readings and different things. So if you want to learn more about that, I did a whole deep dive at the end of this video. Go to the end of the video, and you can find out more about how to win the reading and all that other stuff. Let's get a card right now for our Scorpios. One card. Action. Yeah, action. It's time to take action. It's time to start moving. This is not the time to, the guy just said, sit on your duff. <laughs> It's time to get up and get moving. And, you know, because this has to do 
with this action, I use that the clacker or whatever it's called. <clears throat> Excuse me one second, please. <clears throat> you know, it may sometimes it could have to do with if somebody's you, maybe this is a film project that you're wanting to do, or even a TV show, or something that you know, and maybe it, you know it's going to come. They're going to maybe they passed on it before, or maybe one company passed on it and then another one's going to pick it up. Maybe if that's the case, maybe this is even your agent or even a literary agent or something like that. But I know a lot of creatives watch uh, my my show. My show. Well, I guess it is a show, but my, my readings here on YouTube. <laughs> um, but it's time. This could be an indicator for you to also take action and go after it. You know, go call them again. Even if it's been a while. I want to say for some people it might be six months. We've got a couple of sixes here. Even if it's been six months, call them up. Maybe it's time to, you know, this powerful solstice energy and the Jupiter's in your eighth. If it was six months or even six weeks ago, Jupiter wasn't in your eighth house. So this could be a good time to call back. If you're, if you're not getting the messaging, if you haven't heard anything by that full moon in Capricorn, I, I would say put the call in. You know, oh, what am I doing? I'm shuffling the wrong card. Now we're going to move on to our lots. And we'll start with the lots of love. Okay, let's see what we got for the lots of love. We've got dating. So this could be, for some, it's a romance from the past, you know. This could be a romance that you may be reconciling, perhaps, with an earth sign person. You know, a Taurus, a Capricorn, or Virgo. All right, let's get the um, next one. Yes, no, maybe. It says, certainly, certainly. That's a yes. <laughs> and then finally, let's get our lots of proverb for our Scorpio friends. We've got, there's no accounting for taste. <laughs> well, you know, I, when, I, when I hear that, and usually that's kind of a dig, you know. It's usually like, what are they doing with that person? Well, there's no accounting for taste, you know. It's kind of like a negative, like I don't see, you don't agree with something. But what I got here is, it's sort of like, um, what I, I feel like I want to relate it back to this. Whatever you didn't get the go-ahead on back when or whatever happened here, there's no accounting for taste. Maybe or there's no you know there's really not any rational. Don't take it personally. In other words, you know, maybe they didn't make like it, but maybe there's a new boss at that company or a new executive or a new person in charge or or maybe they're looking for something else this time. Don't overthink it and think, well, why didn't they like it last time or what did this happen or blah, blah, blah. you know, just don't overthink it, Scorpio. Just be say thank you very much. Yes, I'll take the job. I'll take the money. Thank you very much and be on your merry way. Okay. <laughs> I'll take that financial support, and because Scorpios, you can be that way. You know, you always want to dive in and figure out all the why did it all happen. Don't worry about that. Just enjoy it. Enjoy this time of prosperity and abundance, and things are finally moving forward for you. Okay. Well, I hope that this resonated with you. If it didn't, definitely go check your rising and moon. Um, the other thing is, if you want to get in on that solstice reading, where we actually look at your chart and all, all this stuff, the Jupiter and Taurus, all these things will be covered in that astrology reading. You can find out about that on my website, and if you want to find out more about my deck, and you can all, you can support me in other ways besides financially by helping promote it, and that's what that contest is about. Go to the end of this video, and I do a deep dive into the deck, and I really explain the whole thing with the contest and everything at that point. So have a great month, and we'll be back next month. Now on to the sign of Sag. Okay, Sagittarius, I had the ice cream truck sitting out in front of my house for a seemed like a long time but anyways we're back to do the reading for Sag hope that you're doing well the solstice is coming up it's a shift you're working with all that Jupiter and Gemini energy that's in your seventh house so it's a good time for partnerships even if you're not Sagittarius rising it's just in your opposite sign so those are the other people and you can get a lot of help from other people at this time here okay, let me get a shuffle going here for you guys um, don't forget about the solstice reading. If you want to get in on that, it'll be uh, only available for the end of this month. If you want a psychic astrology reading, it's the only one I offer. Uh, popular every year and many order every year. So if you haven't got yours, check it out. Let's see what's going on for our Sagittarius. We've got the Queen of Swords, followed by the Seven of Cups, followed by the Ace of Cups. Wow, look at that. Beautiful energy. All right, next three cards from our Hanson Roberts deck for our Sagittarians. Let's get see what we get there. We've got one, two, and three. Page of Pentacles. Money coming in. Magician. Boy, that magician. I think, I don't know. I think it's, I, I'm almost like nine out of ten readings or something. Or this is the ninth reading. So 
I mean, just about everybody has had the magician. That's so crazy. I mean, the magician's all about forging ahead, going forward. And look at the other thing that grabs me, honestly, when I look at this, the first thing that grabs me, Sagittarius, is that you have two aces. You've got the ace of cups and you've got the ace of rods. So the solstice is, well, the new moon also on the sixth, but the solstice is that turning point, the new season, you know. Um, this... This is about living your dreams with the Seven of Cups here. The Magician, I always want to see, what's that Magician pointing at? The Magician is pointing straight up at the Seven of Cups. So that's visualizing the life that you want, living your dreams, creating your reality, and leading to joy, love, and happiness with the Ace of Cups. Some of you could definitely be having some kind of, this could be your dream lover. Your dream lover, because I don't want to dream that da -da -da. <laughs> This could be like the person that you've been visualizing. If that's the case, they've been visualizing you too. It's a mutual thing. It's looking like an air sign. Now, if, it, if you're not into women, it doesn't matter. You know, this could be anybody, whoever you're into. Uh, there's a major attraction here. Um, and could be an air sign energy, Aquarius, Gemini, Libra, or we could be talking this time frame of the Gemini time. We will be in Gemini up till the 20th and the solstice when we move into the sign of Cancer. So that's all Gemini, all air sign time. We're also having a new moon in Gemini on the 6th. This could absolutely, because there's a new beginning, the new moon, right? Not only do you have two aces, but you also have the magician, which is also a number one. So it's definitely a time of starting down this new path, turning around this corner. But it feels like it's in more than one area of life because we have two different aces. This row seems to be more about emotional connection, love affairs, even friendships, you know, or love and family love, whatever. And this part feels more like it's money related or career related. We've got this page of pentacles. You could be getting the news that you're getting some kind of a money situation is coming to you. All the young dudes carry the news and the page of pentacles brings the news about the finances and the money. Now, we also are having a full moon in Capricorn and Earth, because he's Earth, Taurus, Capricorn, or Virgo. There's going to be that full moon in Capricorn, so that could be maybe something you're starting on the new moon, and then by the full moon you could find out, yeah, you got the job, you got the grant, you got the endorsement, you're getting the money. You know, you find out that the money is for sure, and then you can move forward with your plans and creating and making your dreams come true. Ace of Rods is planting those seeds that's blooming into more. And again, I look at what it's pointing to. So you want to plant the seeds not only in something that might seem viable financially, because that's more about maybe what this row is about. You know, yeah, it seems like I could make some good money with it, or it might be a good career move for me. But what if you want it to make you happy. You want it to go to something that's going to have some emotional uh, fulfillment. Or even, it, you know, the cup energy can also just be the creative energy, too. Something that creative. But the big thing that I'm getting, what sparks your light? What brings you joy? What makes you happy? What fills your heart? Let me fill your heart with joy and laughter. Togetherness. Well, it's all and Just call my name. And I'll be there. Yeah, just look over your shoulder, honey. <laughs> so maybe you gotta look over your shoulder. Uh, all right, let's get the animal totem. <laughs> the leopard, a cheetah. We don't get this card very often. This is a good chart. Card. This is a card about creative projects, and it is about having more than one iron in the fire. The reason that happens is because the cheetah actually has so many litters because their young are so susceptible to prey. So they're, they're constantly giving birth and creating new, because out of those, you know, some of them will survive, you know, but um, empath, healer, prolific creator. So maybe it's about having, trying more than one thing in some cases. Things happening at lightning speed, staying alert to synchronicities and signs. The path of the soul practitioner. Now that's interesting too because the magician could also be called the soul practitioner. So for some of you, this may be something that you're just doing on your own, your own business. Maybe this love relationship is, you know, or, or this could be somebody who's just sort of hands off, like somebody that you check in with from time to time. Like maybe you're a freelancer and you have to time to time check in with the supervisor or maybe this if you're in the entertainment creative field maybe this is your agent or your editor or you know somebody along those lines or publicist or something but it's really all comes down to you here and you 
being that path of the soul. Oh gosh, all these all fell out over here. What I'm shuffling now is my de deck that's actually just in the prototype stage right now. Um, and I'm, I'm doing a Kickstarter. If you see this before June 6th, you could get in on it and maybe win a free reading. It's going to have a little uh, pendulum with it. And, uh, all, there's all kinds of cool stuff. If you want to learn more, I did a deep dive and I'm going to tack it on to the end of this video. So head to the end of the video if you want to learn more about getting that free reading or just more about the deck in general. But I'm going to pull you one card here. Oh, I've got two. Here's the one. Uh, Yin Yang. Yin Yang is all about balance. It's balance, harmony, um, it also can be about like finding that inner balance and that inner joy and that inner calm and that inner spirit, putting together the right combinations, you know. Here's the other thing about this whole, maybe there's more than one thing. Normally I don't use the Seven of Cups um, because the Yin Yang can be two different things also, you know, it's two, it's going on simultaneously and we've got this two thing happening. You know, the Seven of Cups, like I was saying, I don't normally use it that way, but a lot of people will say you got you can't, if so many irons in the fire, you got to make a choice, you know. But maybe you don't even have the choice, or, but maybe you take the best two or even the best three and put them out there, you know, just put it out there because it does feel like it's going to, there's something going to take off for you. That's really what I would honestly want to say for you, Sagittarius, this month. Something that you're putting out in the universe is really going to take off and cheat up fast, okay? Stay in balance. Don't, let, don't get, keep yourself in balance. Keep yourself. Um, don't lose. You know, stay grounded and stay in balance. Okay, let's get your lots of love. It says separate. When I heard, saw that, I heard separate but equal, and I know that's like that horrible thing that happened with uh, racism and schooling and whatever. But that's not what they're talking about. Um, Again, these are these two projects, you know, keep them separate but equal. Maybe one you're working in a partnership, maybe one you're not working in a partnership. It's more of, of your thing on your own. Uh, let's see here. The answer is assumably. So that's like, yeah, nothing changes. You got it. And then finally, your lots of proverb. Still waters run deep, yeah. Well, you know, again, the Seven of Cups is about that meditative state, and the yin-yang brings that energy to the forefront, too. Stay in balance, stay in harmony. The still waters, you can see clearly. If you put a rock in the water, it mucks up your whole vision, because you're doing, you're doing the visioning, you know, where you should be. You should be trying to do that visioning at this time. So, yeah, it looks like a big month of starting new projects and making a lot of headway and a lot of leeway and a lot of potential success, too, if you can just keep calm and keep cool. You know, with this whole thing with the yin-yang and the balance and everything, you might be looking at a Libra here. Uh, or, or you might be dealing with something uh, that happened back during the Libra eclipses, which I believe was back in April. Could be something that sort of started to happen then, and now it's really starting to take off for you. All right, Sagittarius, well, thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to check your rising and moon. Um, if you want to get in on that solstice reading, you have till the end of the month. It's, I only offer this once a year. It's always very popular. It's a psychic astrology because there's a lot of astrology stuff. This year, it's a good year to get it because there's quite a bit of uh, action on the astrology front. And we'll take a look at it as it pertains to your chart. And again, if you want to find out more about my deck and how you can win a free reading, go to the end of the video for more information. All right, Scorp um, not Scorpio, Capricorn. All right, Capricorns. Well, it's your full moon. It's right. It's within, you know, like a day of the solstice. So even if the solstice doesn't fall on the 20th in your time zone, you know, it's going to be within 24 hours, this full moon and Capricorn. So I, I, I want to make sure that I'm, I'm saying that right. Is it for sure within 24 hours? Let's see here. So sun enters Capricorn 4.51 p.m. So just say like 5 p.m. roughly Eastern time. And then the full moon, well, it's actually um, an hour, a little bit over an hour. It's an hour and four, uh, 24, 28 hours later. But, you know, it's so close. It's very close around the same time. So that's your full moon. So your full moon is kind of supercharged this year with the energy of the solstice. Um, and, you know, you, again, you're one of the cardinal signs. So we're having, the reason it's going to be a full moon is because the sun is in Cancer opposed to the moon on your side. Cardinal signs always do feel those ingresses, and you are one of the cardinal signs. The ingresses meaning the change of seasons, and that's what's happening here on, with the solstice. So it's a shift in energy, and you could, this year you could really feel it even maybe a little bit more because it's, you know, the full moon in Capricorn is right the next day, you know, so you're, you're full moon. So it's definitely affecting the Capricorn natives. 
All right, let's get our first three cards for our Capricorn peeps for the month of June of 2024. One, two, and three. Ten of Cups, lovely. Isn't she lovely? Seven of Cups, that was in that same spot, I think, in the last reading. And then the Nine of Swords, okay. All right, let's keep going. Let's get three cards from the Hanson Roberts for Capricorn friends. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's see, Capricorn, Sun, Rising, Moon for the month of June of 24. Four of Pentacles, followed by Page of Swords, followed by Ace of Rods. I think that was in the same spot in the last reading, too. Isn't that interesting? All right, well, you know, we can't ignore the... I mean, this is overall a very positive reading, but we can't ignore the elephant in the room of the Nine of Swords. What I feel like is don't be caught... Because Capricorn, I know, and I'm a Capricorn sun sign, too, so I'm not... I'm not ragging on you, okay? I'm just, I know how it is. You know, we're ruled by Saturn, and we can get into that depression. Because this is that card of, like, being in sorrow, being in depression. But you, we always got to look at the way that everything is facing and everything. So she's down here, he or she, they're crying. They've got their hands out, so they can't see anything beyond all these swords. They can't see anything. If and, and what's behind them here, if he just takes his hands down and looks around, you got the Seven of Cups and the Ten of Cups. So this, there's potential here, especially on the full moon. The full moon could really illuminate your path and show you the way of to get out of whatever rut you're in or to heal this wound that you've been suffering, this emotional wound here. Ten of Cups is the most happiness, joy, love that you could possibly handle. Okay, so you definitely want to get your hand out of your, like guys are saying, get your head out of your butt, but they didn't use the word butt. <laughs> Get your head out of your butt and out of your hands and look around and, and count the blessings. Count. Let's, this could be considered. Let's count all our blessings. Don't keep counting, well, this all went wrong, 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 wrong. My life's a mess. No, this is good. This is, well, what about this? What about this? Just anything you can appreciate is going to shift that paradigm for you with these big changes with the full moon and solstice. It's very much paradigm shifting. It's going to shift that paradigm, shift your perspective. Instead of looking down, look up and look at how these people are looking up at the joy and celebrating and joy and the happiness and the cups in the sky. So there's happiness to be had. Get out of your own way. Get your head out of your butt. And let's count our blessings and let's look at the good way. Some of you might be concerned about money with the Four of Pentacles. That's nothing new for our Capricorns, right? We're always concerned about the money. But there's going to be news coming with air sign energy. Now, air sign is very prevalent this month. We're going to have um, Gemini all the way up to the 20th. The sun will be in Gemini. And not only that, which is an air sign, not only that, on the 6th, we're going to have a new moon in Gemini. And this is a new beginning. So this could definitely be talking about this new moon in Gemini. It's planting these seeds, and they're going to bloom and flourish. And whatever this is, it just wasn't meant for you, or maybe the timing wasn't right. You know, there's just millions of reasons why it didn't work out. But the more you dwell on it, the more that that's going to hold you back from all the beauty that's just blooming all around you. So let's get our heads out of our butts. My guys keep saying that. They're using a different word. I guess I could say ass. That's not too bad of a swear word, right? Get your head out of your ass. That's the way they're saying it. <laughs> look around. Look around. Look around. What are they telling me? Feel your own town. <sighs> I think it's a Pink Floyd song. I'm not quite grasping. If anybody knows, leave it in the comments. Hey, if you want to, I love to read your comments, but if you're going to comment, always talk about, say, in the Capricorn read, because you'll say, what, and I'll be like, which one was it, you know, and I won't usually go back and listen to the whole thing, and I want to, I want to, you know, acknowledge and understand what you're telling me, so always conclude what sign you saw it in. Look around, yeah, your own town. All right, this is the snake energy. It could be like a snake in the grass, you know, it could be some deceit thing, but also it's like this root chakra, and this is, always reminds me of the root chakra too, like the base of the spine and going up to a kundalini awakening. I mean, some of you may be going through that. Those can be very, sometimes if you're going through a kundalini awakening, it can be very, you know, you might find yourself like, what's going on? Am I going crazy? You know, what's happening? So you look at the positive things and maybe even ask for help if, if needed. 
Kundalini activation, carnal knowledge, portal to awakening primal chi energy. The new you is emerging. Yeah, the new you is emerging with this ace too. And the turning of the corner of the whole seasonal thing and your full moon. It's a big turning point this, this month for you guys, uh, Capricorn. All right, let's get our, this is my new deck if you've just skipped right to your sign. And um, I'm going to pull you a card. I'm doing a fundraiser. It's got a whole bunch of cool stuff, and I really want to get it printed and with all the extra cool stuff that I want to include with it. So if you want to learn more, go to the And you can win a free reading just by helping me promote it. So go to the end of the video, and I do a deep dive into it if you want to find out more. But let's right now pull in a card for our Capricorn friends for the month of June. Music. Well, yeah, or create, actually. This is the create card. Yeah, creativity is a great way to get out of your own head and get out of your own way. And you don't have to be, consider yourself an artist necessarily. You know, there's all sorts of journaling. You know, there's all sorts of way of creating gardening, cooking, um, just creating a plan for your life. That's a, always, for me anyway, and I'm a Capricorn, that's always a great way when you get too caught up in your head, you do the creativity, and it takes you, even if it's like adult coloring books. I have a couple of adult coloring I have more than a couple out. I have like four or five out now. Uh, but you don't have to use mine. You know, there's, there's ones online you can do on your tablet, even digital ones. You know, it just takes you out of this space, and it, light, it clears the energy and clears your field. Creativity is a great outlet. And again, you don't have to be, consider yourself an artist. It's not about artistic achievement. It's about clearing your field and getting in that zone of feeling better. It just really does elevate, and it does help you, okay? Let's get the animal totem. Or, not animal totem. The uh, thing says release, yeah. Which I really don't like to use that word anymore, but it, this is something that you definitely, you know, we're trying to get rid of that, whatever that is. Get that out of your way. Get out of your own way. All right, let's get um, through your own town. Truly. So that's a yes. And let's get your lots of proverbs. One proverb for Capricorns. You've got, if you love something, set it free. Yeah. And it could even be whatever this is. Maybe you're still caught up on some person. Maybe it's a project or something that went awry, the guides are saying. Whatever the case, set it free and allow for the new energy to come in because the universe can see all kinds of things that we can't see from our vantage point of being in the human body. Let the universe guide you. Do your visualizations. Count your blessings. And good news is definitely coming in with this page and all this stuff down here, okay? All right, Capricorn. Well, thank you so much for tuning in. Don't forget to check out your sun rising and moon. If you want to get in on that solstice reading, I'm sure it's going to be really prevalent for many Capricorns. You have to head over to my website. This will be the last month that you can get that reading uh, that reading will be available and if you want to find out more about my deck and ways that you can support me and even win a free reading on your own head to the end of the video and I'm going to talk all about it there let me tell you all about it now next we're going to move on to the sign of Aquarius hello Aquarius thanks for tuning in for your psychic tarot reading for the month of June of 2020 I almost said 2027 of all things so for some of you, maybe there is some kind of thing that's going to be happening in 2027, but we're talking about 2024 right now. Let's get our first three cards for our Aquarius friends. Two of Swords, major decisions being made. Wheel of Fortune, nice. That's a good one. And then the Emperor. So you've got a date with destiny with the Emperor. Okay, let's get three more cards for our Aquarius friends. You're still dealing with the Pluto in your sign. And Jupiter's making a chime to it, so it's really activating that, that of Pluto, calling you to make big changes in your life. Six of Cups, followed by Eight of Cups, and then finally, the Judgment card. Yeah, it's time to move on, Aquarius. This reading is saying that all over the place here. There's some of you are going to be going back home, perhaps, or moving back home. But, you know, it feels like you're just ready. You're, you've put a lot of effort into something, eight, so maybe eight years, eight months, eight weeks. And, you know, this moon energy, so it might even be on the new moon in Gemini on the 6th, or even the full moon in Capricorn on the 21st near the solstice. You know, you're just ready. Because here's a 20 card of the judgment, and that feels like the sun and the moon. The solstice energies feel stronger, but whatever the case, you're over it. You're ready to move on. You're ready to move on to greener pastures. And there was, with the Wheel of Fortune too, but more so with the Judgment card, 
there's definitely some kind of a karmic cycle that has been completed. So there was some suffering, or maybe not, not always suffering, but lessons that you had to learn. And Pluto will do that. You know, Pluto's going to put a change in your life. You're trying to make a decision. Um, the Wheel of Fortune is calling to you. You're being called by your fate and your destiny and your true north. And there's going to be, you have a date with destiny, they keep telling me, with this emperor. Now the emperor could be anyone, doesn't have to be a male energy, but it's the person who has the power, the authority, the boss, the leader. Um, they just said to me that he has, he can make or break careers, this person. But I don't feel like it's, any, don't let that scare you, because I feel like this person is going to, his clout, he's going to make your career. Six of Cups is here, so there's something about going back to the past, but not this past. It might be going back to even, sometimes we, you know, we have our, when we're kids, we know what we really want to be. We still have that imprint in us. We know our, our true pathway. We know what we're supposed to be doing here on Earth. And it's that thing that we loved, like when you were a kid, or even, well, when you were a kid and they said, what do you want to be when you grow up? You know, what did you say? Because maybe there was a, some truth in that. Or they're just saying out of the mouths of babes right now. Maybe a child will say something that's going to trigger you. But it feels like it's pretty life-changing. You know, it might be, but sometimes that's all it takes. Somebody says that one thing and it's just like, you know, you're right. You know, and it's that word that just triggers us. This could also be not little kid, but maybe when you were first getting out of high school or going to college. Or what were your plans in life then? But maybe we all do this. We, like we go to school for one thing, and then you know a lot of people do, and then you end up going down this other pathway. This could be. This is a time to reconfigure or realign with your true soul's calling and what you're actually supposed to be doing here in this incarnation. For some of you, it might even have to do with children. Like maybe you're going to work with children. Maybe that's your thing. Or maybe if you've been putting it off, maybe it's time that you're going to start a family. You know, there could be an actual connection to children. But it, for most, I feel like it's more about you going back to your own true soul essence, your own purity and innocence of thought when you were younger. And you really, maybe it seemed far-fetched, or maybe even adults or other people said, oh, no, that's, you know, get, get a real job. I mean, I've, so I've been told that many times in my life. Go, why don't you just get a real job? You know, and, um, and you got talked out of it, pushed out of it. Now it's time to reclaim that. Reclaim that power with the Pluto in your sign. That's the thing. Got Ladybug. You got Wheel of Fortune and Ladybug. Both are very much connected to the considered lucky, but it's really more like synchronicity. Yeah, but the Ladybug is super lucky. Lady, lucky Lady of the Garden. Harbinger of happiness and joy. Rid my life of obstacles that are destructive to my divine right to flourish. Yeah, the divine right to flourish, that feels very much like what you're going to be recapturing. You, you had it at one point, or you had an inkling of it, or you were connected to it, or you had your eye on it. But then, you know, life happens, like, like all of us, life happens, and then next thing you know, you're working in some crappy job that you hate, or whatever, you know, and then you've got all these obligations, and kind of, you know, it, it, it's, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a trap, I'm hearing, it's a death trap, it's a suicide rap, we gotta get out while we're young. Cause tramps like us, baby, we were born to run. Yeah. Ooh, I got chills all over when I said born to run. I don't know if you can see that. My arms are lit up with goosebumps. My legs, too. All right, let's get this. Well, what we're going to do next is my upcoming deck. Hopefully, if I can raise the funds to get it printed. But um, it comes. I wanted to come with this cool pendulum and, and tin and all this extra stuff. If you want to learn more about it and you want to find out actually how you can win a free reading, go to the end of the video. I'm going to do a deep dive about the All-Seeing Eye. But right now I'm just going to pull one card for Aquarius from my All-Seeing Eye Oracle cards. The Vortex. Wow, this is intense. This is an intense time. You know, and it's not surprising because the Pluto in your sign. And I'm going to set it right here. And in this card, the Judgment card, I always look at what is the judgment, the, the, the horn of the angel pointing at, it's pointing right up here. There's an opening, there's a vortex, there's a way to shift paradigms right now. Could even be the solstice, which is a shift of energy, but for you, stronger, the more stronger vibe is that, you know, the Pluto in your sign. But whatever the case, there is a portal or a vortex opening, there's an opportunity, and the timing is right with the Wheel of Fortune. This isn't something that's there all the time. It's something that's here, right in the here and now, 
and if you have the energy, you have the direction and the wherewithal to act on it. And there could be strong ties to your own childhood or past here. All right, let's get our lots of love player. Well, some of you have dealt with the player. Maybe that's what you're moving on from. You're tired of it, you know? I'm tired of this crap. I'm moving on. I want something real, genuine. You know, because that children, that keeps grabbing me at Six of Cups. And, you know, children are just real and genuine until they're taught otherwise. You know, they don't play stupid head games and all that stuff. You know, they're just, they speak from the heart. Let's see here. Unlikely. Yeah, so if some of you are trying to salvage some relationship, I'm sorry, I mean, watch your sun rising and moon, but these two cards and this, it's saying it's time to move on from some emotional situation. And in, and in that case, this could say you're going to feel like your old self again. One more card for your parable or a prophecy or whatever. Be yourself because everyone else is taken. Yeah, if you're trying to fit into this mold, that's so perfect, I feel, for your reading, Aquarius. If you're trying to fit into this mold or all the stuff like get the real job or trying to please this partner that's unpleasable and never, it's never enough, it's time for you to shut all that. That's what the power of Pluto can do for you right now. Get rid of the dead weight. Purge all this stuff. Pluto is death and rebirth. And it's going to be purged, and it, it, yes, it was probably a karmic thing that had to be with wheel and judgment. Yes, it was probably a karmic relationship that you had to go through, a karmic situation. But that doesn't mean you stay in it forever. When that portal or that vortex appears, when that divine timing shows up, when Pluto moves in your sign, it's not going to be back for 250 years, you know. And so that's the time to really make these big moves or at least make the plans to make the big moves you know you don't just upheaval your whole life because you watched a video on youtube but maybe that's just the impetus that you need for some people out there watching okay um excuse me okay aquarius well thanks so much for tuning in do check your rising and moon to get more insights and information and if you want to get in on that solstice reading well we will really look at how that pluto is affecting you, you go into your chart the psychic astrology reading it'll only be available till the end of the month if you want to find out how you can win a free reading and also help me get my deck out there go to the end of the video and i'm going to do a deep dive on my awesome all-seeing eye oracle cards all right next we're going to move on to the sign of pisces let me get these decks back over here <clears throat> all right pisces what's going on well you still have saturn in your sign but you're another one i'll tell you with the solstice energy, with that, because everything that's in Gemini, let's pull out the wheel just for a second here. So here you are, Pisces, right? You're mutable. So it's Pisces, Virgo, Sag, Gemini. That's all mutable, okay? Anytime something's in a muta another mutable sign, like Gemini, it's a square to you. You've already got the pressure of Saturn in your sign. Now you've got Jupiter squaring you. So you could feel kind of under the gun or kind of pressed or pushed, you know, pressure, which Pisces doesn't do well under pressure. Pisces likes to just kind of be chill, you know, they're very chill. This energy of the sun, at least, getting out of Gemini and moving into the sign of Cancer, that's going to be your fellow water sign. That's going to not make a square, but instead it's going to make a trine, where the trine energy is super harmonious, where you can have harmonious flow, and that's, Pisces, you do better with that. You do better with, you know, with the sugar in the honey, like you catch more flies with honey or sugar. These want to flip over. I guess we could use them, and then we'll take the top one. Um, you know, you do better by gently coaxing rather than trying to be forced or pushed. You know, Pisces will just be the introvert and back away. You know, you don't do well with that, being pushed around. And that could, you might be feeling like you're a little pushed around with that Gemini energy. Okay, let's get our top three cards for our Pisces friends for the month of June of 2024. Pisces, Sun, Rising, Moon. Well, that's the King of Cups. That's the water sign person, or it could be your energy. Knight of Rods, fire sign energy. And then finally, the Hierophant groups and organizations well you know it does seem like there may you may be you know you're doing some struggling here but doors are opening right now pisces that's what it really looks like i love that you're showing up as the king now yeah this could be another person it could be another water sign person that comes in maybe even perhaps somebody who wants to fund your project or give you the money or give you the raise or something like that it would be after the sign of water but i really feel like this also represents you like i always say too 
these, reading, these readings are over multi-tiered. It's not like, well, that's the King of Cups, so it's the other guy, it's not me. No, it could be the other guy and you and the other guy too. And, you know, it could be a lot of different people. It's, it's not just one thing, ever. You know, that's what's so magical about the tarot and the divination decks. You know, it's multi-layered. So, you, but here's what I wanted to say. You showing up as the king. This means that you have reached some level of mastery. That you have risen above. You're not a page. You're not, you know, you're, you're not an apprentice. You're not, a, you're the top, you're top of your game. You've reached this level of mastery. And you, you, you're looking out, you can, you're up here and you can see it all. You have a clear view of the whole picture. You, you're really rising above and you're really in this position of higher spiritual knowledge, but also maturity. No doubt helped by this, the, fa the fact that the sign of Saturn is in your sign for the first time in 29 years. You've got somebody right here, and I just heard my right-hand man. So it doesn't have to be a, a male energy, but it feels like a fire energy. Leo, Aries, or Sagittarius. Now I'm looking here. We don't have anything in fire sign. So it just might be the sign of the person, any big events happening. But also, towards the end of last month, in May, on the 23rd, we did have a full moon in Sagittarius. So this could be something that was sparked around that time of that full moon in Sagittarius last month. There's a connection, important connections that are going to be made through this Hierophant. Now this could be a big group of organization, it could be a big company, it could be a church. I mean, I'm really leaning towards the church for some reason, or a spiritual group that meets up, or maybe it's even a spiritual retreat or something for some. But it does feel like that there is a, a gathering of like-minded people, and there is a bit, even if they're not calling themselves spiritual, maybe it's like, could even the the term the uh, habitat for humanity pops into my mind. You know, maybe it's not a religious organization, but it's people coming together with you know high ideals and doing good work and doing good things. And it feels like you know you're definitely a part of it, and you could be in a leadership position within this whole project or this whole structure, whatever it is. Whatever you've been struggling for, by going in this direction, the fool is looking. He's not looking at the struggle anymore. He's like, I'm going to go to the higher realms. I'm going to take the higher road. I'm going to try something different. You know, the full is zero. And that's what happens on the solstice. The sun goes to zero. You know, it makes a zero. So it's, it's, this full is very prevalent in that way. And it does, in the northern hemisphere, it is summer and the flowers and everything. It feels summery, you know. The, the money's going to be there. If it's the struggle's been over the money, somehow the money's going to show up. The money's going to be there. It could, I keep wanting to use the word benefactor. No matter what it is, you're going to have help. You may get some kind of a grant or endowment through the arts or through some other whatever you're trying to do here. There could this thing here, this hero fan, this could be somebody that gives out, um, you know, grants or endowments or something like that. All right, let's get at your animal totem. But it looks very positive for you. And I love, again, that you're showing up as the king. Like, you're keeping your cool. You're not going to be pulled under by this. You're keeping your cool. You're looking at the big picture. You're looking at your options. And you're kind of trying things that maybe you haven't tried before. My little back brace just came undone. Hold on, i got to re-Velcro it. Oh, it's not, it's not wanting. The Velcro is about shot. It's all full of fuzz and hair and everything. i got to get a better one. But here, once we can finish this reading, we're down to the last reading. We can do it. We can do it for our Pisces. We gotta do it for the Pisces. We gotta come through for the Pisces. Oh, this one wants to come out bear. When I saw this, I thought life it can be a bear. You know, sometimes even something's like difficult to deal with. Like, oh, this thing's such a bear. You know, but really, the bear is a very spiritual card. And look at does it seem to you like he's moving forward or is he coming in or is he going backward? Because it could be like you're going into hibernation or you're coming out of hibernation. Majestic wise spirit, star brother of the north, retreat into the womb of the great mother to emerge anew, to find your territory, set boundaries, and create sacred space. Yeah, that really feels like you here again, taking that more mature uh, approach, you know. And I like this, this wise spirit, you know, that also feels like that's encompassing you, Pisces, in the form of the king of pentacles. Okay, let's go ahead. Next, we're going to pull a card from my hopefully upcoming deck, the All Seeing Eye Oracles. I want it to be really cool and come with a. It's in the. As of filming this video, it's in the Kickstarter phase. So, if you want to find out how you can help me get this printed, whether through donations or just by sharing and maybe winning a free reading, 
skip on through to the end of the video because I'm going to do a deep dive all about the all-seeing eye. But right now we're just going to pull one card for Pisces for June. We've got uh, the time card. It's interesting because the time card um, is Saturn is Father Time. The planet Saturn rules over time. And that's what I started off the reading with, that Saturn is in your sign. So you've got this, this time card. Time is also divine timing. And it also talks about timelines. It really does. It talks about going down. There's always an alternative path. There's always an alternative timeline that you can go down. Um, you can go the old way or you can go the new way. You can forge your own path. There's many timelines. And you're at this point, especially with Saturn in your sign, you're at this pivotal point, Pisces, where you can take, you know, you could take it to the next level. You could be, t they want me to say time traveling. And, and it can be like that, but time traveling in the way of just going, memories, you know, going down memory lane and remembering some old things like that. You may be like that, but really this feels a lot of like going into the future and choosing the path. The pool is putting its foot upon a new path. You don't have to continue down this timeline. You can go down a different time. The time card also talks about divine timing. So you're definitely in a phase of divine timing. Let's get this. Uh, this is a partier. <laughs> so you may have been involved with somebody who's a partier. You know, when you put that together with this card about relationships, and even the Knight of Rods, again, multi-tiered. Overall, I feel this is somebody who's rushing and going to be helpful to you. But multi-tiered, if you want to tie it this way, and the, the fire signs are the party people. And fire and air are the more of the party people, right? You know, maybe somebody's just happy-go-lucky party person, your partner, and it's like, man, this isn't cool. I'm paying all the bills. I'm t I have to deal with all the stuff. You know, fess up. Stand up. You, you know, maybe you're tired of it, you know. Let's get the yes, no, maybe. It says naturally, so that's a yes. And then finally, let's get your lots of parables or proverb for Pisces for June of 2024. Pisces. It says... Make love, not war. Yeah, if you're in, in a bunch of struggle in that, take that high road. Find that alternative timeline. You don't have to defeat anybody. You're not that type anyway, Pisces. Again, you're, you'll you'll revert. You'll you'll in, you'll go to your introvert. You'll back away from that. Not a lot of Pisces, unless you've got some Aries in your chart. You know, if you're on the border of Aries, you might have be a little bit more feisty. But most Pisces are just not. You know, they are lovers, not fighters, definitely, I would say. That's definitely the energy of the Pisces uh, energy. All right, everybody. Well, thanks so much for tuning in. If you enjoy this kind of reading, I also have a, a Patreon where I do readings. But if you want to get in on this astrology reading, we'll look at that Saturn in your chart. See what? Because if you're Pisces Sun, you might have Mercury, Venus, some of the other planets in Pisces. We'll look at how that Saturn's hitting your chart. This is a, a reading for the upcoming season. And if you want to find out more, this is coming up next. We're going to dive in and talk all about my all-seeing eye oracle cards. I want to pull this out and talk about the contest first. Now, originally I said to share the video. It seemed like a lot of people were getting really confused about this whole thing about how to enter, okay? And... Yeah, you can share the video, but if you just want to go to the, and all the links are below, the link to the both videos, the Instagram and the, and the Facebook video, and also the uh, actual campaign. At this point, though, I'd really prefer if you just share the link to the, cast, the campaign, honestly. And you have to add the hashtag, all seeing eye oracle cards. People are putting it in the comments. I'm deleting those. It's not about making a comment. The idea is I want to get the word out there. So I, you need to share something to a public account. Share is really important. You have to share it and it has to have this hashtag so that I can track it later and to get you entered into the giveaway, okay? The things we're giving away is three, I'll give away three people will receive a free astrology report, one person, or two people will get the uh, psychic reading from me, and one person will get a soul portrait. And if the campaign is successful, I imagine I'll add on some decks and some other things, you know, if I can get it printed. It ends June 6th, so it's ending at the beginning of this month. Um, the link is in the description. The winners will be picked using a random number generator on June 10th. So again, commenting doesn't get you in the contest. And you have to share it to a public account. That's important because if you share it to a private account, who knows, you know, first of all, I can't track it. And secondly, the idea is, the whole point of this whole thing is that we want to get it out so more people will see it and find out about the deck and hopefully back and support it, you know, and help me to get this deck printed. 
So that's really important. Again, if you share the official videos, there's one on Facebook and there's one on Instagram, that'll count too. But at this point, I'd really prefer that you just share the link to the campaign. Share it to a public account with the hashtag All Seeing Eye Oracle Cards, and then we're going to pull some names and give away some prizes, whether it's a success or not. I hope it's a success, but this is just a way to really get it out there and get more eyeballs on it and maybe more people that might be interested so they can come in and potentially back the thing. And coming up next, stay tuned, I'm going to do the deep dive into the all-seeing eye oracles and everything about it. We're going to go look at all the cards and I'm going to, you know, we're going to talk about the different things that I want to include and why I'm raising the funds and everything else and really take a deeper dive into all the cards. So thank you all for being a supporter and watching my YouTube videos. Hopefully we can get this deck printed and get it into people's hands because it is really a cool deck. Stay tuned. More coming up about the All-Seeing Eye Oracles. Have a great month, everybody. See you next time. Hi, everyone. I wanted to do a little deeper dive into my All-Seeing Eye Oracle cards with Divination Board and Pendulum. Uh, um, I want to do a little background on myself. You know, I've been reading. I started reading. I come from a psychic family. My grandmother was a psychic. She read tarot cards. I got my first deck at age 13 in the 70s. I um, started reading professionally in the 80s. Also in the late 80s, I was always at art. My, that was one grandmother who was the psychic, and my other grandmother was an artist. <laughs> so I kind of pulled a little bit from both of those. But around that time in the mid to late 80s, I was doing graphic design, I really started doing graphic design, and I really started doing professional readings. And I was a professional reader, um, I, I worked on the Psychic Friends Network, I did all the psychic fairs and the psychic shows, so I know what people are asking for in a reading. And while being an artist, and I love art, I mean I love the beautiful illustrated decks, many of them are very beautifully illustrated and a painterly styles and you know I do that myself I paint and I'm some point I am going to maybe do a deck like that but for to do a reading I'm coming from the unique perspective of number one I'm a psychic and I've been doing actual readings for people for decades you know about many many thousands of readings I've done for actual people and develop my own style and but I'm also a graphic designer so I look at the cards with a graphic designer eye and while again how I love some of these beautifully illustrated, more painterly style of decks, I find myself over and over again as a seasoned reader coming back to these types of decks. And the three that I have here is the original Rider Waite Smith. And if you'll notice, it's black line art um, and with color, you know, it's very, you, there's no fuzziness to it. Very clear symbolisms, starting with the line work and then going into the artwork. And I brought a couple other examples because these are the ones that I come back to time and time again. I own, I don't know how many decks, I have a lot of them. And this one's the Morgan Greer. I mean, the illustrations are different, but it's the same thing. It's got the black line artwork with the coloring in. And I just feel like those are the best ones to actually do readings with. And then here, of course, is the Hanson Roberts, which is my main deck for many years before I started creating my own. Same thing, you know, it's line art, black line with color. Yeah, so that's why I chose this style of um, illustration. Well, it's actually graphic design, but these are all hand illustrated. These are all hand drawings and then colored in for the main objects. But if you do like to go a little deeper and hunt around, it's maybe not picking it up that great, but on here there's all these other little things that you can kind of zone in on and look at. Now, it is a 50 card deck, okay? And the other thing from doing the readings all these years, the other things that I have discovered is that many times the tarot just doesn't answer the questions that the client is asking or that you yourself may be asking. Such as, I don't know how many times people have said, you know, what kind of job should I do? Or what kind of school should I go to? Or am I going to move? Or is this person, you know, there's so many things. There's a lot of things in the tarot and you can bend it. And then I, I did a search actually and there's 50,000, over 50,000 books on the tarot um, on Amazon. So there's 50, over 50,000 interpretations, which is cool in a way. And I'm not going to stop reading tarot, but... This deck can pick up where the things that the tarot maybe can't pick up. I've come across so many questions that are so difficult to answer through the tarot because they are dealing with our modern day, not knights and kings and, you know, the different things that show up, you know, in the deck, the original deck. So 
you know, this is a tried and true thing, and I'm not discounting the tarot, and I'm not throwing the tarot out, but this is a great, you could use it as a standalone deck, or you can use it um, as a companion to the tarot, or for clarification, or to ask certain kinds of questions that are just hard to answer from the tarot. Okay, in this next section I'm going to go through, because I did borrow from the tarot, not everything is completely original idea, although one thing I do want to mention, like the Major Arcana in the tarot, where we start with the zero card of the Fool and we go all the way up to the world or the culmination, I did the same thing with the 50 card deck. I started with the birth card and it goes all the way up to the um, Nirvana card or enlightenment. Okay, So this next section of this thing I'm going to go through and show some of the things that I took from the tarot and go into a little more detail about the creation and of this deck and how to use it. All right, I wanted to sh show you how this corresponds with the tarot in some way. We, in the tarot we all have, we have the four suits. The swords, the pentacles, the rods and the cups, which corresponds to the four elements, air, earth, fire, and water. Air, earth, fire, water, air, earth, fire, water. I just used the queens as an example. Well, we have all four of these elements in my deck as well. We have the air, the earth, the water, and the fire. We don't have specific people, but you can still get that element. And you could still use that. It might be an air sign. You can use it as a person. It might be an air sign. Or you can use the qualities. I mean, there's a booklet that goes all into this, different ways to use it. And on some of the cards, like I do have the, the signs here, like the air signs are Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius. The earth signs are Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. The water signs are Scorpio, Cancer, Pisces. And I didn't put them on the fire signs for some reason, but the fire signs are Leo, Aries, and Sagittarius, of course. Um, you could use this in a reading and you could like, if this symbol catches your eye, it'd be like, oh, maybe it's a Virgo or, you know, different things. You could even use this as like, if this came up with a health card, maybe you need to eat more vegetables, you know, air, maybe there's messages coming. So there's a lot of ways we don't have to have 78 cards necessarily kind of telling us the same thing. Like we don't always need four core cards and any more and more, I'm, I'm not really using gender in the tarot anymore. Anyway, I'm just saying it's an air sign person. It's a, this person or whatever. These can also be timing like it is in the tarot like it could be in the time of air so for instance during this campaign the time of air is Gemini so it might be during the time of Gemini or the next air sign the other thing is in addition to the four elements I have cards that do represent each of the seasons the birth card represents the spring the bloom card represents the summer the harvest card represents the fall and the death card represents the winter. So the seasons are covered, the elements are covered, but in a more compact way and also with other juicy bits in there to key off your intuition and allow for more communication for the guides to come through, your guides to come through, okay? Well, there's many cards in this deck that are sort of an ode to the tarot, but in a more modern way. Some of these cards I definitely put in it and it's just practically just like the tarot. Number one is the justice card. Here's a few things of a justice card. And here's how my justice card looks. It's justice, but it's more modern day. Signing of contracts, police, courts, judges, you know, things like this. And so there is an element of putting the modern day in. Of course, we had to have the soulmate card because everybody always wants to know about this soulmate energy. But I put this more, you know, I put the lovebirds in and some of the romantic things and even an ode to the, the cups, the two of cups, okay? The death card, you know, we always got to have the death card in a divination deck, so that's also here. I'm lining them up if you're not catching. Now, the star card, I did a completely different take on the star card. I did it more of, less of a spiritual card, which is a highly spiritual card normally, but in this case I made it more about you being the star, you stepping out onto center stage and, you know, wearing the crown, winning the prize, being in the spotlight. So it's a little bit of a combination of the star and even the six of cup, I mean six of rods. Now the devil card, I don't have a devil card, but I have this freedom from bondage. Well, it's freedom but it's actually freedom from bondage because the main element in most of the devil cards is just they're in bondage and that's the main keyword. So in this card, it's sort of a, a nod to the devil card, but you're breaking free of the chains of bondage, okay? Now the eight of rods, I don't have the eight of rods, but I have the action card. And if you'll notice the way that these arrows are turning, it's very much 
a little nod to the Eight of Rods uh, with the action card. But it encompasses a lot more. And again, bring in the modern day action. Maybe it's a film project. The green, you get the green light. You know, things are there's chaotic energy and, and so on and so forth. Now the wish card, I, I had to put a wish card in the deck, of course, but. I don't have the fat little man there, the plump little man, I should say, you know, sitting in his abundance. Instead, I have the genie coming out of the bottle and all the different things. I have, you know, uh, make a wish when you blow out your candles, the ladybug, the wishing well, you know, the genie in the bottle, the shooting star. But one thing I had to do, you know, the nine is the nine of cups. I did make it number nine. I also did that with the action card. I made it an eight because of the eight of rods. Now this one, it's not a seven, but it adds up to a seven. It's 25 and it adds up to a seven. And this is my nod to the seven of cups, particularly probably more this one, but maybe, you know, all of them, I guess. But it's like, um, well, Seven of Cups can be a lot of different ways. People use this card sometimes as that you're having delusions or whatever. I always use it as it's, it's a visualization, it's a manifestation. But I'm sure if you look, you can see the little kind of, you know, it's a nod to it. It's not an exact copy or it's not called the Seven of Cups. It's actually called the Dream Card. And this card is the only one where the eyes are closed in this. And there's other cards too that I've definitely done a nod to. In addition to the soulmate card, I also have a card that is just called love, which could be any type of love, self-love and so on. Another thing that I've done is I've included the trickster card, you know, because uh, that's an important thing. It's like the joker in the playing cards. The trickster is an important element in people's life and an esoteric, you know, readings and it's important so I've added that in there. Um, the luck card might be sort of akin to the Wheel of Fortune. You could think of it that way but it's I would put luck and um, time are two that would be related to Wheel of Fortune because the wheel is divine timing but luck is more you know these modern day lucky things you know dice and these different lucky four-leaf clovers or slot machines you know um, and then the time it, it's a deeper card than that, but it, it encompasses that divine timing that is from the Wheel of Fortune in the Tarot. Uh, the Nirvana card is sort of like the Judgment card. You know, I might have one laying around here somewhere. Yeah, here's a Judgment card, where you've reached this state of enlightenment, where you've come through all the stages of growth and development on a spiritual level, and you've come to the state of Nirvana or enlightenment. Um, another card that I put in that's not in any Tarot deck is the Riddle card. Which basically, because sometimes you just aren't going to get the answer at that time. It's just unpredictable. It's You don't know. And when this card comes up, basically it's like you're just not going to know the answer at this time. More things have to unfold. It could also mean all of these are multi-meaning and multi-tiered layers of meanings. This could just also mean like, you know, there's a riddle. There's a riddle that has to be solved or a mystery. The snail card, that could almost be like the strength card too, about taking it slow and taking it easy, or even the hangman, you know, to some extent. Taking it slow, taking it easy, resting, going slowly, noticing things. Um, oh, we could just go through a few of the others here. The magic card, there's no magic card in the tarot, and magic is such a prevalent thing. There's also a cleanse card of clearing out our energy field and removing the past. Pets. I don't know how many times during readings people want to ask about their pets and I don't have, a, there's no cards for that. I mean, again, we find ways to work around it, but why not include it? The Dragonfly is just because it's one of my main totems and it's just a beautiful card and it's transformation and healing. I think that might be the only strictly animal card in here. Sorrow, I mean, the Tarot devotes a whole suit to Sorrow and the Swords where people are crying and the ten of, Nine and Ten of Swords, you know. I just have the one card indicating Sorrow. I've got Purge, the Yin Yang for balance, Wealth, instead of a bunch of different pentacle cards, we've got the one here. Blasting Off, this is going into the future, the Journey, following your North Star, the Music card, there is no Music card in the Tarot. Creativity or Create, there's no Creativity cards per se in the Tarot. Soar. This is sort of like maybe like the Six of Rods a little bit about being getting that victory and soaring above. But it's beyond just our earthly limitations. The Four of Rod. How many people want to know? When am I going to move? Am I going to get the house? Here it is. It's right in the card. The Peace. The Peace card I used all for the definitions on the Peace card. I used all all my channeled information. So there's, there's some channeled information in the booklet too. 
this is all our modern day. This could also be a vocation, you know, the telecommunications field, or maybe just sending messages, writing, journaling. The medical card, there's no medical card. Some people will use the Hierophant, but this is straight up medical card. Could be a field of study or a vocation. It could be time for your checkup. The plant medicine or the herbal card. The party or celebration. The education card, higher education, schooling. There's nothing like that in the tarot. This one is a really powerful one, too, of transition, flux. Things are in transition, sun rising, sun setting. The attract card, very much related to the modern day notion of the law of attraction. The impasse, meaning you can go no further. Sort of like the Five of Swords, but it's a definite, like you're not going any further. The vortex card, you know, entering into portals, moving into higher dimensional realms, not in the tarot, okay? The sound healing, sound resonance card, nothing like that in the tarot. The mending fences, also nothing like that in the tarot, but this is a human condition that happens often. The lineage card, or DNA and family and your heritage, breaking family you know, the family karma, the gemstones card, working with gemstones or other things, you know, and I've got these other ones. And the way that you can read these cards too, as I said, you can go like, it's past, present, future, and then in reverse, not happening, but you can all, I mean, yeah, you can do it. And one of the ways that you can read these cards is it's coming into, if it's like this way, it's coming into effect, here it's in effect, and there it's leaving. So it's waxing here, in the present, waning. You could also do this for timing if you wanted to. You could go past, present, future, not yet manifest. You know, So you could do it like that or just read them all upright. The booklet is really detailed and there's a lot of channeling in the booklet too. So here it is, you know, my work of this is probably many years, it's nine months in the making, but it's many years in the making. And all, again, all my years of doing the readings and all the thousands of people I've read have come to, has put me in this position to see where these gaping holes were in typical tarot and even many divination decks. I love, I love my divination decks too, but a lot of them are just... This is things that people ask and people want to know about, okay? from I know this from doing the readings, all right? So this is the things that I've included in there. Um, and then the cool thing, the thing about the divination board on the other side, and I know the Z is missing on here. That's been corrected. That got squished in under the star somehow, but I've corrected it. Um, but, you know, this was whole thing was shown to me in a vision from Spirit Guide. Whoop, there it goes. I was asking, I'm going, well, I've got the cards done, now what am I going to do for the back? And I closed my eyes and I saw this exact vision of this mini pendulum board and this mini pendulum. This little star, you can use this as sort of the starting point if you want. You can kind of try to line it up with that star in the middle of the eye and then pick it up and let it go. I mean, these are little. They're not the best pendulums. It's sort of like a little trinket, but it's, I thought it was a beautiful idea. And if you want, if you don't, if this isn't really getting it for you, I mean, they work. I've, I've tested them and they work. Um, but you can use any kind of pendulum. You can use a larger pendulum. You can use anything you want. You don't have to just stick with this. But I just wanted to put this in as just a little extra gift. And that's the reason I'm doing the, fun the fundraiser, too. I mean, I could go to one of these print-on-demand places, like my other decks, for instance. I've gotten printed at print-on-demand. And the quality's not that great, honestly. I really want the quality to be that great, to be much better, a really good quality. And I want to include the tin and this and all of that is these little extra things that is going to take money, to, you know, to for production of. You know, I've got to buy all the parts and I've got to make these myself. Actually, is what's going to happen. I'll probably get some people to help me. And then it's got the tin and the box and the color booklet. So that's why I'm raising funds here. It's not like I try to get rich. It's I want to make it the best I possibly can. I want to include the tin. I want to include the cool little pendulum. If I had to end up going to a print on demand we couldn't do any of that stuff you know that wouldn't be a part of it plus the color quality is not great and everything else there's a lot of reasons that I really just don't want to go that route I also wanted to you know once I get them printed I want to make them widely available like through Amazon and these larger platforms which is again it's possible to do with the print on demand you know the platforms but it's not it's not ideal it's hard it's a, a lot of extra struggle and work and it's just not really it's just not really viable okay 
So here it is, everybody. I hope that you love it as much as I do. There's so much to learn and discover in this deck. I mean, even just using it a little bit. If you head over to my YouTube channel, I am including it in readings from here on out. So if you want to see it in action, you can find the link out to the YouTube channel. Or if you're watching this on YouTube already, then obviously you don't need that. But if you're watching this on the page, you know, head over to the YouTube channel. As I've been working with these cards only for a few weeks in actual physical format here, and of course these are prototypes. These are so thin. This is just really thin cardboard that I cut out by hand. So the actual cards are going to be good quality. That's, that's important to me. And that's the reason I'm doing this Kickstarter and that's the reason I'm raising the funds. I hope you find it as cool as I did. I did put a lot of thought and this is my years of field experience all culminating and coming together. And it's a great one that you can use it in conjunction with the tarot or your favorite divination deck or as a standalone deck. But it definitely includes a lot of things that were really missing over the years of my discovering and doing the reading. All right, everybody. Well, thanks so much for tuning in. I hope that you can contribute to the campaign and we can get this thing printed and out there with all the little extras that I want, the tin and the, you know, the little, this, I thought this is so cute. It's got a little hand on it. That's so perfect, right? <laughs> so I just really, I really want to include it. So I hope that we can hit that goal and get this deck printed and make it available to people. And I hope that, I love to hear, I can't wait till it's out there being used and other people I coming up because it's meant to grow. Like I said, I did a search on tarot and there's 50,000, over 50,000 books on tarot, which I've actually wrote a book on tarot. You can find mine in there, but I'm not pressing that right now. But that's just how many different takes on this uh, the one main deck. And I could see that absolutely happening with this. So I'm super excited about it. I want to thank everybody for watching the video and tuning in. And I hope that you can give a little support and we can get this deck printed and out there because it's a deck whose time has come. Thank you for all your support. And remember you are love and beauty incarnate. Till next time. Bye.